All right, everybody. I know you want to be able to see Secret versus Tundra, but of course, we got to be able to check in with our favorite man on stage. It's your Action Slacks with the coach interview. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I am here with Alway 2000. Sir, this is my first uh, chance to catch up with you. You know, your drafts have been called disgusting. Cheating, Team Secret said before they got into this that you guys are cheaters with these drafts. Is that how you feel still? Are you guys keeping up with that, that sick theme? What? <laughs> That's what they said. They said you guys are cheaters because your drafts are so disgusting. Maybe. I, I think we're, we're playing heroes that we're comfortable on. And I think this game, like, um, we have, like a good vision of the game supposed to go. And if we execute, then we'll feel really good. Speaking of heroes that you're good on, my friend, uh, I think we got a 100% win rate on OD very, very fast. Is this going to continue that for you guys? Hope so. Okay, well, he hopes so, and we hope for a great game. So let's throw it over to our casters standing by. Thank you, Slacks. That's right, it's Cap and Avery in case you forgot, Slacks. But here we are. We got to pause just to be able to catch things up because we did have this situation where uh, we had the teams kind of walking around while this coach interview was happening. Fortunately, we got this pause. Avery, we were talking about it before this game started. What was the storyline to this upper bracket finals? And for me, you actually said something that I thought was, was very fitting. You reminded me that Tundra was once upon a time one series away from being able to go to TI, TI-10. They barely missed out on that one. Very true. Second chance for them, right? They'd being able to be here at TI-11, and they've made the most of that chance. They've gone very far through the tournament so far. And Secret, of course, everybody knows about that. that there's a huge second chance right there. And to go through the last chance qualifier. That's the ultimate second chance right there. Yeah, that's all you get. After that, there was no other opportunity. <laughs> they've made the most of it, right? I mean, yep. these two teams, second chances, they still have one in the bag, too. Upper bracket. Makes you feel a little bit more comfortable when you know, hey, if things go wrong, we're, we're still in it. Yep. That said, I don't think either of these teams wants to drop down, and they definitely don't want to lose the dominance in terms of the meta, right? Both these teams are trying to define what's going to get them to the finals. The if you get there begins. with that definition in place, gives you a bit of an advantage going into those early games. Because now you're saying, hey, no one has broken what we're doing. Yep. And especially for Tundra, who I feel like has just had one of the more unique styles this tournament. Banking off the zoo, banking off the lane shove. Outworld Devourer, who else is playing the mid heroes at nine is playing at this event? Nobody else, I'll answer for you. This is a team that really wants to keep that momentum going and not have people kind of break that strategy and make them second guess, hey, are these things as strong as we think? Because like I always said, right now, they're just playing what feels good. I was telling Bruno backstage, I was like, I feel like this game, this series could be just like a, a, just a stomp of a 2-0. I don't know which side it's going to be, but I feel like it's definitely two different ideas matching up against each other, and somebody's going to walk away right, and somebody is going to be a little lost mid-series and figuring out what to do. Definitely possible. This is a make-or-break situation, and Puppy, the all-time experienced captain, he has made or broken a lot of teams. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see it go that way. That said, early laning phase, another situation <laughs> where you have to play versus Tundra offlane, one of the most annoying offlanes in the game. You're always pulling waves, always disrupting the equilibrium. Yeah. Never seems like you get that 2v2, so... Puppy's already doing a little shenanigans with uh, Sox down here, chasing him down, trying to meet the waves. <laughs> Of course, this will give solo XP to the other two, but Soxa does not want to run through mid. And this is kind of what Puppy was talking about when he was saying that they're just kind of like, I like to refer to Tundra, I'm not sure if I would call them dirty cheaters, but I would say <laughs> dirty and nerdy. That's the combo that I think of when I'm like, what, what is Tundra? What is, makes them dirty and nerdy, man? These guys are the guys who break down the game to a science. They know every little mechanical interaction. They know every little dirty thing you can do in lane in order to swing a bad matchup, and you're seeing it right here. And Secret, they all also know that and they have come up with a plan to be able to deal with that puppy's trying to you know as you said meet the poles together i mean you can call it dirty and nerdy i don't know if you're in top three i call it just good dota yeah that's good figure out the mechanics of using better than your opponent it's one of these things that these guys do the best and meanwhile secret they're gonna have to play with that double melee off lane so skeeter is gonna have a really good early game like he is going to have very nice time he's on his naga he's playing into mag you have to keep in mind this tundra lineup they have couple save mechanics built in versus the big AoE team fight that Secret's trying to push down later, right? You have oh, the yeah. Sleep to counter-initiate, you have the Astral's to counter-initiate. It's a lot of time you can waste for this BKB duration that at some point Crystallis might end up going here and trying to take the Roche fights with already queuing up Maelstrom, so... The more you can deal with the lanes for your supports, the better off Secret's gonna feel in this game. I also feel like the damage on Secret isn't like the fastest in the world. You know, like I could see a very real scenario where Chrysalis, ooh, maybe give it a first blood, not quite. Yeah. But just the damage could just be a little bit slow. There goes that save, there goes the song, and you get a reset. 
Like Seeker, when they choose a target in this game and they choose to go on it, you have to commit and you have to commit hard. And you also have to get out of these lanes. Like we've seen this brood just destroy some of these side lanes. 33 is having a pretty good time. He has not had to invest a huge amount in regen. Normally these super early waves is where brood can struggle, especially in these core matchups like Monkey that tend to abuse him. Oh, nine. It's got just, a fairy fire. Just as we showed the stat there of how successful uh, OD has been at TI and specifically, there it is, the nine OD. The only other team to try out this hero was Team Spirit, who ran it in the offlane but collapsed. Didn't quite work out for them. It's in, it is interesting, though. It's the first time they're going to be playing Dire Side OT. Wonder how much that changes. Quick TP mid. Yeah, an early rotation that's going to catch Nine, perhaps. Is, oh, Deep no, he over. ended up on the wrong side of the cliff. Nine. I don't know if that was intentional or what. Maybe it was just good old-fashioned luck, but close enough to the cliff there that it puts Science on the wrong side. Nice little move. He'll sure it up. Still at Fairy Fire. I'm not sure he goes down. There's just not a huge amount of mana in the tank for Nisha there either way, but I think they're happy to get out of this lane in a pretty good position. Snaking, losing his courier. Not going to be too happy about that one. Oh, even worse. Uh, Our Ember Spirit uh, did not actually get a chance to refill his bottle, so. Talking about being low on mana. It only only gets worse. Oh. Looks like Snaking Itch is gonna fall. Resolution. It's way too hard with the 2 2 0 uh, uh, build he's got going on. Okay. Yeah, this is the buff to Shockwave, right? This back hero is pretty strong on lane. Like, he's just chilling here with the ring. Downside of Marana Naga is you can't pressure super early. So Rezo is just having the time of his life up here. Even CS with Skeeter. First blood gold on top. Even more unstoppable. And him having a good game is really nice because he has his. The most flexible item choices to some degree. He can go more early utility if he can go the Vanguard, Arcane Boots, mm. Mech. Some of these early items can help them skirmish, accelerate the tempo. At the same time, he's going to scale with other two cores. Bumpy steps a little bit strong. too far forward. Crystal's going to come in, trying to help his buddy out here, but it's not going to be enough. Too much damage from 33 and Zoxta. As I believe Puppy thought he was doing a little bit of pulling. 33 is going to take some damage in return. He can jump under the trees and make a go for it. As you can see, Zoxta was even trying to cut down trees to make sure Chrysalis gets caught. But ultimately, feels like just pushing the Broodmother out of lane is good enough for him. And honestly, giving Monkey some solo XP might not be the worst. I don't think oh. Puppy wanted to stay down here too much longer. Yep. That was a close call. You see that Nine tried to stop Nisha from being able to yeah. pass over the, uh, the bottle over to the Disruptor. But it did go off and he did get that refill. Every little thing on the main stage adds up. Puppy's lingering around here, maybe trying to secure the vision for this six-minute rune. They would really like it to go the Ember's way. Since this OD, of course, not one of the bottle mids. So he, this gives an opening for Nisha to really get these six, eight-minute runes power up on the map. If it's haste or double damage, he's going to be in heaven. And he needs, he's got three mangoes in the bank right now, and he just needs one creep to die, and he'll have level six. And that's where that kill power in the OD, especially as he's been ramping up all those imprisonments. So this is a dangerous situation. There's three Zox is going to cut over, over. That one creep, it's going to die right now. He's going to get his level six. Now they've got the ultimate to drop it if they want to, and there it goes. They kill the Ember Spirit. Now look to be able to chase down Puppy as well. Puppy with a spiteful last breath kills the Arcane Rune uh, before game he game does game. die. But a successful rotation by Tundra, picking up two. Contesting that six minute rune, getting the level advantage on OD. Those little lane things matter. And Nine will drop that first hammer, cement his fate. No rune for Nisha. That was one he really would have run and wanted. We can also see like some of this minor synergy. You're gonna have to care about the Astrals a lot more in this game because every Astral means a free arrow for Snake in the fights and the skirmishes in the river. We didn't really talk about this OD bottom combo, but it's a classic for a reason. Uh oh, Chrysalis. He go a little bit too far forward here. He's trying to get the Jingu stacks up and then be able to swap over, hit the big swing that gets him back up to full. And it's 33 who thought they could challenge the Monkey King. Step to the King, Avery, you best not miss. Damn straight. That all is pushing him to level six. So Stahl is having a pretty good time down here in this bottom lane. Like he is really taking it to the Brood, which is exactly what you want to do. You need to slow down this Brood's level six timing as much as possible. Because that's when you can start to ignore your core matchup, get to the jungle, cut yeah, waves, so accelerate the farm, get into that Wraith Pack pipe or whatever utility he wants to go. That's what unlocks Tundra's five-man team fight. If all that gets slowed down, because your Monkey King is killing the Brood early, it means your time to get to this Maggot power ramps up considerably. Mm. So Secret, I feel like they're having a pretty good time on lanes here. I mean, this is probably in the upper band of what you would expect or hope for, especially from a Mag lineup. 
Talking about that, Mag, when you... Talking about, okay, more time for the Empower to kick in for the Monkey King and the Ember Spirit. Do you think that also means that they feel very comfortable going, like, pretty pretty far into the late game against the Naga Siren because they have these uh, big steroids coming in? Oh, bottom lane, 33. He's going to be kept in place. Not long enough, though, for the Monkey King to get those stacks. I mean, I think you're always confident going late game with a triple melee core mag lineup. But like we said, Tundra does have some of the safety utility to play around with it. Nisha Passed uh, over. Jumps over to his remnant. Did have enough mana for that one. Double That's a PD. Uh, well, they can skirmish around mid. Yeah. There's a lot of dust is coming in. Max light. It's dangerous, though. The imprisonment, the self save underneath tower. They get one oh. last hit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He's going to go for it. Nisha. He wants his kill. One second for Slight. Out of far enough away, he's out of range. And now they've got the toss up of the air. Oh, into the snowball pickup. Dodges the arrow nicely. They are going to be able to get another round slight. Look at Knight. He's creeping in on the side. He's going to come in at the last second to be able to bail out Soxa and get the kill on his eyes. Tundra bringing the numbers again to shut down this Ember's momentum. That's a huge rune. We can see the damage coming through. And of course, the whole time that flies out, Nine gets to complete his Midas. Already proccing it. This is the build he is favored on this hero the whole tournament. Midas into that Axe Rush. It's gonna be extra attack speed and extra item progression for him. Here Arrow's that in. arrow. Ooh, a little hit early. the range creep first. And both oh, teams oh, really oh, trying oh, to play oh, around oh. these mids. Oh, goodness. Look at that stack. Rezo is gonna be huge. No stacks on the side of Tundra, so this is gonna be, they're already uh, uh, up a bit in net worth. That'll continue with uh, stacks like these. And 33 just has to walk out of base here. He's choo choosing to save his TP. I guess they're going to send him mid. He's tired of going against this monkey disruptor kill combo. At the same time, he can't really go against Mag. I don't think he feels great just sitting up there potentially feeding spiders, playing into Vanguard. 33 a little lost this early game. This has been one of the rougher starts for him. I feel like I've seen all tournament. Yeah, he's certainly. jungling with Insatiable. This is not the route of progression you want for your off lane brood here. He's trying to get to level six. No, you're supposed to get, yeah, you're supposed to get six in lane and then, you know, you just are able to, even if your lane is hard, you could still jungle so much faster. The fact he has to do it at level five. Ugh. That's going to feel terrible for him. It also pushes Soxa more towards these mid skirmishes, which again, we're seeing 10 minute rune. Holding Might in place. Be a bit of trouble. Depends how much Secret commits. Snowball afterwards should be able to keep him in place. The arrow sneaks in from the side. Oh, he actually tosses over Zayas at last second. Hello. Tries to block him off, but is going to be caught by the imprisonment. Probably surrounded here. I don't think Secret could do too much to stop this one. Indeed, does fall. Nine with a killing spree already. Secret's got to be happy about both their side laners just getting full farm and solo XP, though. Mm. Like, sure, you're winning some of these mid skirmishes a little bit. You're contesting the runes. Ember, he's getting his economy drained a bit. He has a power to catch up. Rezo and Crystal is just having free for all in the first 10 minutes here. I mean, like you said, they are going to be big. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Rezo, I feel like he's had two different modes this TI, one of which has been, like, this carry-style off laner who he just is, like, Picking up second most net worth on Team Secret is just absolutely destroying in the mid to late game. The other mode is where he's just running around with Zayats nonstop. And they're just constantly looking for kills. It's definitely going to be the former one, where Rezu's just going to take a lot more time farming in this game. I mean, he can play carry mag to a degree. He did offer the Vanguard, will go blink. I mean, it's a try carry lineup. They're fine going moderately late here, no matter what. And quick smoke from Seeker trying to activate the strength of Magnus with the catapult push this tiny out of here. They don't want to let Tundra just sit up here and leech XP, especially when nobody can defend this tower on their own. Yeah. If they successfully kill this tiny cleanly, they can go ahead and take the tower, get a decent bit of map control, especially since Chrysalis is still able to hold his safe lane, no problem. Tundra just really hasn't been able to activate around that. Yeah, I mean, you have to double man smoke yourself, which is exactly what Tundra is doing. Found him. Caught him in. Shards, Shockwave, and uh, Soxa. Well, all you can really do is delay the inevitable at this point in time. There is going to be the rotation to bottom, so now we are seeing that activation to the other side of the map. Question is... Crystal should read this, though, right? Uh, yeah. You know no one's defending top. This Naga's sending illusions mid. It's so greedy oh, to try and hold your safe lane tower like that one. The arrow's going to come around, but he was already on the trees. An interesting interaction where midway through the air, he got hit by the imprisonment, but managed to land on the trees anyway, and the arrow was off the mark as a result. I mean, what is an ash? prison to a king cat. Yeah, that's true. He does not care about your physics. And that's a huge gank dodge, because that kill is the kill that's going to convert on this tier one, right? Now, he can stay down here. He can play in the trees. Seeker can have teleports up to Dyer's take the fight if they want to, especially with Ember, the mobility on the map. Seeker's invading your jungle. 
this lead can build a decent amount here in the next minutes and Seeker make like one more good move. Meanwhile, Puppy's just been soaking the levels mid. I mean, he's six and a half with Arcane Boots. He is farming up a storm, as Puppy likes to do. <laughs> that is true. He's had a very long career, and most of it has been playing sort of a greedier style five position. Because he's still, like, you know, you talk about, like, the captains, the old dogs who play five positions still. And there's so much talk about, like, oh, well, the strategy and drafting they do. But Puppy, when it just comes down to the play, he's still got it, man. He is still one of the best five positions from a mechanical Radiant's perspective. Oh, absolutely. He's also one of the best at killing creeps. <laughs> this guy well, that's hit. a mechanic of sorts. Invis, Moonlight, Shadow, they're going to be able to set up the toss and arrow combination that catches Nisha looking around in that dire jungle. Tundra reclaimed that bit of real estate while they're also simultaneously taking the mid tower. Maybe not right now, but the spiders, they'll eventually do their duty and uh, bring it down, so. This is a downside of Secret Support Duo. They do not deal with the Broodlings. So 33 can have his way in terms of cutting waves, pressuring buildings, forcing Secret Cores to split up. And that's where those moves from Tundra with Moonlight Shadow or the vision they have on the map from Naga makes it a lot easier for those to work. Yeah. This is where Secret have to choose how they play the map, and they have to choose it carefully. If they have more anchor points like this monkey or mag, they feel are strong. The other one just group up. Blink reveal, skewer back. Small little distance. They do hit a nice combo onto Zayats here, but uh, they might be able to catch both here with a beautiful static storm. The chain's on top. Sneaking's going to get run down. Zoxa does get bailed out, though, by nine. And that OD hits pretty hard. They don't want to play around him. They want to finish off that support. They do claim it. 33, he was kind of hovering around here, isn't able to do much considering the lack of farm that he has. He doesn't really have an item to play with just yet, which is going to be that Wraith back build. Doesn't end up claiming that tier one mid with the Broodlings on the back end. That's nice. And steals the rune from Nisha, so getting a little extra damage in. Of course, that was the mag blink reveal. Maybe not the best target secret wanted there. They would have really liked to just RP this OD and take the fight without that save. That's going to be a big consideration as well, right? When Rezo blinks in, you have to keep track of the Astrals. You have to keep track of this Naga Song. Because you get turned around on all of a sudden, maybe your Static Storm is gone. Maybe you expended some remnants in that RP. Fight's looking a little worse, right? Yeah. Wukong as well. There's a lot of Static Spells that Secret can drop in these team fights. It gets reset. You have to rethink matters a lot. So when Reza wants to fight, kind of the <laughs> key here. Zayat, ooh, nice sidestep there. Instantly read the where award was going to be, and he actually picks up the last hit before Snaking can get the deny. Secret baiting this bottom. Rezo pre-teeping. Stalls might get aggressive here. He has Maelstrom online already. And with the stun plus. first, follow-up snowball, just 100 to zero, nice and easy. Mm -hmm. And now, Tundra, this little push that they were looking for, it's uh, immediately denied. Secret is doing a very nice job of holding their map. They're not building a huge advantage, but it's hard to do versus Naga Brood, who are just going to excavate the lanes no matter what. Yeah. The one advantage they're building is some of this XP, right? You look at Rezo, he's level 12. Compare this to some of the Tundra cores. Skeeter just got 10. The Brood was suffering for a while, still only 9.5. So Secret does have a decent level advantage here, especially on their Monkey and on their Magnus. And here's another smoke looking to use the Magnus' of strength right now convert it into some map control. Yeah, they've cleared out that bottom right-hand side of the map. Now they're going to sweep through the map and try Radiant's and catch somebody on the very attack. opposite ends. The problem is this Naga Siren's pushing in so aggressively. Yep. It's no so heroes are showing on the map. Tundra's just playing safe. This is going to be the name of the game. Radiant's like, if you can get these smokes to attack. lands, they're crazy valuable, but good luck, right? How are you ever going to catch anything in this map when Tundra can always just force you to show? Now you showed Rezo back on his own. Here's the setup. Arrow in the wings. Do arrow, snaking. Perfectly on point there, and before the mag even wakes up from that stun, he is dead. Also, look for that. We've got a blink tanker tiny now on the loose for the side of Tundra, so this just increases the kill power when they do split Secret up, when they do force them to show on these side lanes. This individual kill power of Tiny and Mirana, or, or the OD Mirana, whatever it is, it's going to be scary, especially for Chrysalis, who keeps on trying to hold this safe lane and doing so successfully. Honestly, I mean, this is he is known as a Monkey King expert, and he's showing why. The fact that he's been so wily, staying away from Tundra this entire time. Have to tank the smoke. But the Coyote might have just finally... Oh, that rotation was close. Chrysalis, once again, hypes away to the trees. Like you said, Blink Tiny here. Can also Blink and eat his tree. 
Oh, that foul is. Yeah, that's Snake King. Thinking about the Wukongs, man. Now, this is a little bit of a stretch. Crystal is really trying hard for this one. The rest of his team, no not leaps. quite there. Snake King is going to be caught. No leaps in hand. And they do get the glimpse backwards here with a snowball on top of that one. Two pickups. Very valuable for Secret. Those are two big killers on the map. So now, Secret, they could split up probably pretty aggressively here and try and push in the waves. That was the one spot Secret wanted to bring everybody because it's where all their vision is. They don't have much vision on any of this top portion where Skeeter has just been constantly pushing his lane, stealing triangle farm. 33 is in their jungle, scouting out with Broodleys. The vision is always going to be a constant battle for Secret, so they really have to maximize what they get out of it. And that just means bringing the numbers. Every time you bring the numbers, if Tundra get out without losses, they're super happy. They lose a couple heroes there, it means you're probably losing an objective. Seeker get the most out of that play, and it's going to push this Monkey King up to BKB, 200 gold. It's a very big item for him. It means he can commit in the fight. Your Astrals don't control him as much anymore. You can't just arrow him. It's also great for split pushing, long. right? Like, yep. he can deal with the split pushing because now if he gets imprisonment, yes. okay, I'm just going to pop BKB if they try and arrow. So every item that helps him stay out on the map independently is going to be amazing for Seeker here. This is going to be Ags done on Outworld Devour, I believe. So this is a big power spike for Tundra. They also have Orchid on this Naga. You're not ready. If you get Orchided out on one of these cores, Nisha is not close to BKB. He's still a thousand off. Hunter really want a big core kill into Roshan here. Oh, yeah. Getting a pick off on Nisha would definitely be the most amazing opportunity for Tundra. I mean, but it's secret group, though. Yeah, the spider crawling all over the map. This is one of the advantages of the Broodmother. You feed away a little bit of gold and experience, but what you gain out of it, the vision, what you see, that information is very much worth the exchange. And sometimes what you don't see, that scan clipped them on Roche, so Secret thinks they're roaching right now. And nobody's home. Yep, it's going to break. Staking. Is he going to be able to leap away successfully in time? All three leap charges used to get out of town. Resolution. Not going to be able to find that opening with Blink Dagger. So. Right, Secret's going to think about this tier one mid. They're also going to think about Roche here. Remember, their Roche team fight is absolutely insane. As long as you don't yeah. get song. So, <laughs> that, that is a very good point. They've got all this good AOE, like area control team fight between the Static Storm and the RP, the Wukong's command, but attack. it all goes away if you get Dyer's songed at the wrong time. Is under attack. But I feel like you man up for it here if you have the Ember BKB. Yeah, if they're 200 off this, might be why they're hesitating a little. I think if you had that BKB plus the Monkey BKB, that contest is just not there for Tundra. You just BKB up near the end of Roche. Forgo any type of song contest, and you're super happy committing for this objective. He's just gonna go bottom, try and deal with this flip push, which is always gonna be a nuisance. Deny? He'll take it as well. Very nicely played, but does he get out? Ronald. Oh, here it comes. Orchid as he, well. He has an illusion root, so they know about this. They can't just orchid him straight up. They've got to be able to find a way for him to be able to pop that and then catch him afterwards. But Nisha, he held and held and held. He's like, I'm not popping this. I, don't, I bet the only reason he went to that bottom lane was because of that power root. Definitely that pocket. deep, yeah. He would have been out of there way sooner. Yeah. Now that saves his life from the shadows, quite literally. And that'll push him to his BKB. I think Secret is now a lot more confident the forces Roshan. And as we see straight into the pit, they have max tag team out on this Tuscar, so this is going to drop pretty fast. Hundred do have an option to contest here. Remember, they, they have pretty much everything up, and they have this Ray Pack on Brood. But it's going to be a little too hard to push through this middle lane. That'll be an objective for Secret, and a big one. Wow. I'm very surprised they're giving this up with the Naga Siren on their team. But at the same time, if they contested and lost, I feel like that would be the beginning of a C like Secret would just take a huge lead at that point in time, right? You would get map control. Yeah, absolutely disaster. Yeah. And I just think it's not even a favorable fight for them right now. Fair. Like at the point where both those cores get BKB off, now you have to fight into Wukong, you have to fight into an RP. Rezo can stay super far back. He went four staff blink. So his catch range and initiation range went up a lot. This four staff can also help save people from an arrow combo, right? As long as they're facing the right way, force them a little deeper, it forces Tundra to commit with you. That sets up for your AoE turnaround a lot. This is the part where I feel like Secret's a lot stronger as long as they can connect and smoke out of the pit. Connects. Cut across the map. Does manage to get the tiny here. Three man avalanche is going to buy him a bit more time. Actually gets the other side of the shards there. It's going to be the snowball that chases him down. So they're only going to get the one. Yeah, nice which Tundra beat. is probably accepting of a smoke for a forward position. Not too bad. They'll take it. You do have to think about how much of the map you're giving up here. That's true. Uh, again, your Naga and Brood can like split push these lanes out, but you're losing on the XP advantage every time you make this trade. And at some point, you have to win that fight. And the more of those you give up, the harder that XP hill is to climb. Mm. I, I'm serious. Look at these levels. You have a level, level 11, level 12 cores compared to level 14 or 15. 
It's already yeah. a significant gap. That means another level of talent. So more goal on the map. Do you feel like that's something that is uh, more valuable than it has been in previous patches? Because nice catch there. Just found him. What a beautiful skewer. Soxa was looking for a toss back there. Couldn't quite get it. And uh, looks like they're just going to be baby. No, oh, maybe not. Out. Nine. Walking out of the Wukong skin. He gets glimpsed back, though. And now he dies. They're now they more. actually get the slight chains on to 33 as well with the double BKB pop and the static storm on top of that. That one's going to be two cores dead on the side of Tundra Nisha. With the last round, then it's a BKB hunting for even more heroes. But Soxa said, you want me? Like I jumps off. in, doesn't quite finish him off. The snowball save gets him away. A skewer back almost catches Snake King, but he managed to leap out. The glimpse doesn't pull him back far enough either. So Soxa daring to dive in like that was a bold move. Almost got the kill on Science, but instead ends in his own feudal. More advantage going Secrets way in these five on fives. Just doesn't feel like Tundra can take the full mana fight. Of course, Odie getting caught is worst case scenario, right? Anytime they can displace him, take the fight around the fact that Odie has to Astral himself, they're going to be super happy to do so. And of course, that glimpse. You got to think about it here. Like, yeah. This is a very powerful tool in this game to just keep Tundra heroes where Secret wants them. You can save your buddy, but what happens after the saves are gone? Yeah. I mean, it's such a great, like, win more kind of spell, right? Yep. They win this initial part of the engagement where they get nine out of the way. And once he, once it's forced, Tundra is like, we can't fight back. We have to retreat. That glimpse becomes probably one of the best support tools in the game. And I really like how Secret's itemized in this game. Like, they are not being too greedy on a lot of their heroes. Reza went the Vanguard four staff so he can bail somebody out. Okay. Puppy's just going the Lotus. That's going to help deal with the Naga Orchid and the net for Ember, right? This oh, yeah. This is an item built for the Ember Spirit to help Nisha in the fight. And of course, you have Tuscar who now gets his Blink, so you have Blink Snowball save online as well. These are three really powerful tools for Secret to reset those arrow combos. If the arrow combos aren't landing, your next best bet, your next best bet is these tossbacks. To try and displace the fight yourself, right? Throw people into the OD hits, into the Naga illusions. You abuse the vision to a maximum. It sounds like right now the supports have to do a lot of heavy lifting on the side of Tantra, and even then can be countered. We'll see what they can do, though. Tundra are going to go for a five-man smoke. This is... So they feel like we haven't seen them do this in maybe the whole game. Now they might find the Zayas Tusk. They will. Yeah, they will. They're going to toss him over to the side here into the Orchid. Now Puppy shows up. He actually ran in. going into this one. The Static Storm goes out. The Wukong's man on top of that one. They're going to chain it with the stun from Chrysalis. Make sure that the Murata can't get away. Nice and prison save. save. The five position is going to come back. The statues and the slight. Make sure he stays down. It's another toss back here if Tundra want to think about it. Oh, Rezo is going to displace Ooh. the first, though. Yeah, there goes the toss over to the side. So both the repositioning spells being used here. But an RP locking out the two of them. The OD ultimate was dropping on BKB. Misha, they're going to fight it out with Chrysalis. So the song isn't going to be enough for Skeeter unless... There it is, the imprisonment with the song on top of that one. Now with the BKBs failing out, He's can out Secret continue this fight? Or Tundra, are they going to be able to be the ones to catch over hero after hero? A glimpse back, not going to do enough, though, as it's going to be Nisha caught by the Orchid. Drained of everything he has, including his life. They may have had the Aegis on Team Secret, but it's Tundra who come out the victors in that well-played team fight. All these long team fights are going to be Secret's bait in this game because these Astrals add up. They're just out of mana by the time that fight is done. You look at that Ember's mana pool in the death pool, it's 580. You got nothing left to do anything by the time this fight progresses past that song. Just an awkward initiation too, right? Both secret supports pretty much taken out at the start to some degree. Puppy has to drop the full kit. Just look how much this Marana death gets stalled. It was a snaking by, but now we're getting Dipping more player arrow. Out the Static Storm trying to protect him, but it looks like with the imprisonment, it's probably going to be enough. Now, Zoxa's life is going to get traded out one for one, but they do have the ensnare on the Monkey King no here. He doesn't have his BKB, not for another 20 seconds. He's a big time trouble. They do manage to get the skewer back on to nine, but without the Monkey King, do they have anything to take advantage of this one? They do have the Ember Spirit coming in over. hot. Nine, he needs to get out of here, but this damn kinetic field would lock him in in place. Nature goes for the kill, and Nature will claim it. Shockwave managed to finish him up the end. Now with the BKB, he's going to challenge Skeeter. Doesn't really have the damage against the Naga Siren, so we won't find a secondary kill during that BKB timing. They did cost Secret a buyback there from the Disruptor. Expensive. You can see how chaotic these fights can become very fast for Secret. They want to take the more organized five-on-five -five engagements where they get their big spells off and kill at core. The second these Astrals starts coming out, Lotus Astrals, arrows flying through on top of summons, on top of illusions, on top of broodlings. It's too much, <laughs> too much gunk to keep track of. And, yep, at that point, especially if your BKBs are out, the fight just becomes a nightmare. 
I like this pickup. Snaking, grabbing the gem. Now that Tundra have kind of gotten back some of that map control away from Secret, they can start taking down some of these wards. Map goes dark for Secret. It becomes even harder to deal with these kind of split push lineups, right? When you don't have the vision. It becomes harder to team fight too. Like Secret's a bit reliant on the jumps at this point, I think. It's about who they initiate on, how they anchor that engagement. Ideally, it's OD every time. Trying to be game, but it's not dead even anymore. No BKB on the Ember Spirit. Gets caught by the Moonlight Shadow rotation of Tundra. This map is just way too hard to play. Like, Secret need to do something to regain some vision control, regain some lane control. It's not necessarily going to get easier for them in the next 10 minutes here. Again, there's just so much ghost push happening on the map. You have Naga Illusions cutting top, Broodlings cutting bottom. Tundra can group, Tundra can pick you off and not have to show that much to do it. Another toss back mid on this mag. Getting forced out. Prisman reset here. Buffy, that's going to be a die back on him. That's why he's kind of dropping everything. Ultimately, you're going to be dead for a solid 60, 70 seconds. You might as well throw all your spells out there. It's the same cooldown. It hit it really is. You are giving some extra mana away. Oh, pumping up the OD a little bit. Tower is under attack. Picking up a lot of momentum now on the Tundra side. A 4,000 net worth lead. And they're the ones now assaulting buildings. And I think that's such a scary part of these split push lineups. When they start getting on your side of the map, it becomes harder and harder to get it all back, right? You feel like you're constantly... Oh, now this lane's being pushed in. Now our tier 2 is falling. The tier 3 is exposed. This is the Tundra playbook. Yeah. This is what you have to be ready for in this tournament. I think Secret's idea is we get this mag lineup, we have a bunch of cores, you can shove out the lanes, scale really well, take uh, the late game fights. <laughs> you can't get there, it's a problem though, and yeah, who's Titan Sliver? Yeah, who Radiant's left that behind? Somebody has a regret in the jungle. Let's see, we'll check out the Tundra side. Oh, there it is, it was the Tundra. All right, well, that's a freebie for Secret. Oh, look at that. They don't want or it. Or maybe don't look at that. They don't want any handouts, Cap. <laughs> want to win this game attack. fair and square. That's damn right. I mean, the Radiant alpha move is you pick that up and you give it back to him. <laughs> That's the next level that. play. It's under attack. Imagine if you win the game on top of that, ultimate Radiant's mental damage being done. I mean, that is something Puppy would do. I want to beat you at full strength. <laughs> next Roshan. That's going to be so crucial, right? I mean, you have gone on this entire... Yay! Rezo finds it in the end. Hey, look, there's the Titan Sliver. I've never heard such a resounding cheer from our new troll item <laughs> in my <laughs> life. He's going to pass it over to the Monkey King, so that's a pretty significant not only damage buff, but also the status resistance oh, could be very nice. Very crucial. Roche does spawn here, but the biggest question is you need lanes out to be able to deal with it, right? I don't think you can just go in the pit and force it like you did last time if you're secret. Maybe Tundra sleeping, but I wouldn't bank on it. They always have that sleep up, so... You're gonna have to find a way to deal with these lanes. It comes down to this Ember just reading the map super well. But there's a limit to that. When you have Moonlight Shadow, when you have all the vision Tundra has, yeah. it's just too much weight for Nisha to do it all. Now you're forced in a position where you gotta win the five on five clash. Tundra doesn't have to force it here either. They do have a hex on Brood. This is an absolutely nasty item if he gets the initiation with it. Might be something that Secret does not expect and does not BKB preemptively for. They throw an illusion up into the triangle area, trying to get some information. Secret is smoked up, though. And so Tundra, they start moving north. They think, okay, maybe they're up here somewhere. Not actually the case. You've got to find this OD, or you've got to skewer one of these cores back pretty deep, and then just triple BKB man up. So you think of the state of team fights, it's much easier for Tundra to win, and it's Secret who have this, like, the onus on them, there's this one play they have to do in order to win a fight. I think Tundra's super comfortable in this game state. I mean, they're also dire. They can abuse buybacks on the dire outpost for this Roche fight. Oh, yeah, that's true. There's a lot of things going their way right now. It's just so hard for Secret to make a move without Tundra knowing it and without knowing where they're coming from. They also have bailout tools. They can use support buybacks on the front line. They can use the toss back. They can use a four staff. Not, the initiation is not guaranteed to go Secret way. You might just get hexed when you blink in. You might get Astral. Enough. You have to worry about them potentially just forcing it as well if you don't have vision. There's a glimpse checking the Naga status. It will be real. Yep. <laughs> of course, what you're referencing there is illusions. They do get one shot by Glimpse, so if you hit an illusion, just instantly pops. Prop is, there's so many of them. Radiance Puppy doesn't mind doing a little illusion farming in the downtime. 
not bad. I think Tundra's contemplating whether they want to just invade this triangle, but it's pretty much the only way Secret wins a fight at this point, I think. Yeah, I mean, if they're just chipping away at the mid tier two, there's really no rush to go into that triangle. No, there isn't. Right? You could just force him to bottom eventually. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to force in this game. And ooh, ooh, ooh. So we see Rezo, he's trying to look for anything. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what, what mix up of the. Uh, Button clicks that one was, but he four staffed and horn tossed, but didn't blink forward. Socks, a thing about blind jumping. Radiance. Cutting his way through. He's gonna find science and toss him back over to the side. Nation's immediately gonna try and take advantage of this. They do manage to get off the snowball and they're gone the on top of the OD. That's all important, but he has the imprisonment. He's gonna come back into Chrysalis with the stun, but he blinked blood. away just Radiance before the stun could hit. And that is so much of the team fight on the side of Secret now. Tundra is going to continue to retreat, though, into the side forward onto the Magnus. He tried to go forward, but he had an Aeon Disc as well, so he's going to be okay. And that hammer did absolutely nothing to it, but it did almost finish off the toss. The Ember Spear stuck inside the Instair with no okay. BKB. He will die, overextending. Yeah. Now Nine yeah. goes in deep, though, nice with the RP. They land exactly what they needed there to turn the fight. Two cores going down on the side, now with a buyback on sides. They're going to finish off Sox, so he gets tossed over, maybe snaking low, beaten down. Chrysalis versus Skeeter, a one-on-one. -on one carry matchup where Skeeter has the health advantage and he's got the ensnare, he's got oh, the illusion, strong, he drowns man. the Monkey King and now Nine comes back into play as well for the plus one. Rezo for Staskewer on yeah, away. They're trying to catch him, but Nine. So close to being able to get off that extra imprisonment, but the blink goes first. Ultimately, Tundra walk away the victors. I mean, honestly, it's not the worst outcome considering that Wukong stun can completely whip mm. on that OD. I thought that fight was going to be way more hard. And you, of course, you force this OD buyback. So that's a huge deal for Secret here. You're going to lose the Roche, but this Roche was just... I don't think it was in the cards at this point in the game anyway. You're going to have to kind of wait out this Naga's timings, go ultra late, abuse buybacks in a 50-minute plus situation here. That is the key to victory for Secret. Right now, Tundra, they're going to have free reign on the map. OD buyback, but he gets the Aegis. So just to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, you think even though they got Roshan on the side of Tundra, the fact that they were already so far ahead in your in your head, that team fight was kind of a win for Secret, just the fact that you said I mean, you I'm got not the buyback. Call it a win, you know? <laughs> <It doesn't laughs> a draw maybe. But just considering how that fight started and yeah. how hard it is for Secret to find these initiations, I mean, we see your Tundra's completely reset, right? Yeah. Even on this second go, Rezo just gets insta hex. These jumps are just very hard. Nisha tries to commit in, but at this point, again, your BKB is gone. You have no backup dispel. Yeah. The team fights become near impossible at this point. So the fact you've got an OD buyback out of missing a Wukong stun <laughs> is pretty good in my book. Yeah, it's fair enough. And it's all thanks to Resolution being able to hit that RP and perhaps a little overextension there from nine, but. Ultimately, he had the buyback, was able to use it to secure Roshan and has the Aegis now for the next four minutes. You were talking about that hammer doing nothing. Something I've just been laughing over in this game is uh, Nine's been running around with this Eye of the Vizier. Yes, the minus 15% <laughs> yes. max mana. That's how much value he puts on cast range. He's just playing for the Astrals. Yeah, I don't need a high mana pool, you know? <laughs> I'll make it up with the saves, make it up with the dispels. Of course, you get mana from the Astral, so... I mean, he's probably jealous funny. of Puppy. Puppy's sitting there rocking a psychic headband. <laughs> he's the, like, that's the cast range item that OD really wants. This is the future of Dota, where OD's lower their own mana pool for the dub. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's also Tundra's game plan for the fights, right? They don't need to burst somebody. They don't need to take some super short oriented fight. They just yeah. need to play along, get a huge amount of rounds of spells off. Both the support is getting caught here. It's Puppy who's going to be run down. Looks like the Tusk maybe got away. He did. Well, he almost did. Well, Resolution is going to be fouled. Uh oh. Now he's got Skew and he's got Aeon Disc. So. Let's see how far away he gets here. Is there is there an opportunity for him to be able to blink away during the Xeon disc or no? Hit by the arrow. Oh, he still gets it off. That status resistance lasted oh, no. just long enough. He fogs him and TP's out. What an escape from Rezo. Twice now, the Aeon disc that he picked up comes in clutch. Absolutely clutch. Doing a little tree work as well. Never hurt anybody. Yeah. That's a lot of time. And every time Seeker buys some time, it means they can get another lane out. Give him some remnant of map control and vision. They're pretty much stuck in the base at this point. Of course, I don't think they have any inclination of fighting this Aegis too much. No, absolutely not. And Tundra's caught up in the levels. They've caught up in the items. Skeeter is super far ahead in this game. 30k net worth. Opted for Bloodthorn, Butterfly, and BKB. This is like a man fight build, right? Yes. This is a build where he just wants to run in man fight secret cores. You're not going to be able to out right click me. Yeah, that just Aeon just barely able to get away. Doing the work. 
Naki live. We have the RP. The lands onto the Naga Sire, but he showed him tanky. They need to be able to 100% him there, but they've got the imprisonment plus the shard. So he's going to be able to walk it off, all thanks to that Roshan pickup. What a glut near, though. Blocking out a bunch of heroes. They also got on top of it. Once again, the OD, they're just walking away from this one, thanks to that imprisonment save. They jump back over 33, who looked to be able to finish off. Puppy has an Aeon disc, and now the song reset comes in. Tundra, they built up these imprisonments. Nine's in the position. Arrow goes out. BKB from Chrysalis. The Takes that one down. Back. Secret on full retreat here. Are they all going to get away from this one? Tundra, do they have anything left? Nisha, he barely got away. Glimpse back, goes around. They have the Lotus Orb to deal with the silence. That part is so hard. I love the Lotus Orb from Puppy, but it's so hard for him to be around this Ember Spirit all the time. Toss away. Oh, there goes Skewer back at the same time. The slight and jump away from Nisha. Soxa thought he had an opportunity to trade his life for a big core, but Nisha's Ember Spirit is just too elusive. No more tosses for you. Rezzle's getting fed up with these tossbacks, man. He is the ultimate displacer in this game. And these fights, they just go long. Gotta save those BKBs. I was surprised Crystal still had his bow oh, yeah. arrow at the end. I thought it was gonna be expelled for sure. Was very patient here from Seeker. And of course, the tactical retreat. Not losing anybody in all of that? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, even Puppy was on like 10 or 20 HP there to brutally <laughs> to the back. Yeah. Uh, managed just to walk it off. Fluffy had. Sometimes the, the 40 minute Fluffy had comes in pretty handy. Yeah. Don't take away that hand. We took it straight from science, probably. These Astrals are going to be a problem. Like, Puppy's building towards Ags, but of course, Rudy Astral doesn't care too much about the Ags unless you're catching him in it, right? Yeah. It's true, which you kind of need to. Oh, it's a nice two-man skewer. skewer. Do they have any stones to follow it up? There's the RP right in front of the tier three with the static storm on top of that one. The imprisonment once again. The BKB is going to go out from Skeeter, and he gets the song up. Once again, they find this beautiful initiation, but Skeeter's Naga Siren is too tanky. He doesn't die fast, and we talked about that problem 30 minutes ago. They do not have the ability to burst down heroes, in which case Nine is always able to take his time getting the imprisonment saves. They just need more damage in order to convert on these finds because they're finding them. They found the, the real Naga multiple times now. Like you said, just not enough damage to kill him. There's going to be an Astral save. There's going to be a Song follow-up. At that point, he just walks it off. Initiation so difficult. Now you're getting turned on. Bloodthorn going to work here. Shreddy Zayas. Definitely no shortage of damage on the Tundra side. You have that uh, Bloodthorn. And you've got to be able to check the OD on these other initiations or find him. You have to do both things at once, right? Yeah. Finding the Naga, finding the Brood, that's great. But if they can just walk it off every time, Hunter's not losing too much on these ghosts. You are heading into very late game territory. So who are you assigning? Like, who has what duty? Do you assign Rezo? Like, you just look for any good initiation. And then what? Chrysalis, you try and jump onto the OD? Or, or what's the play here? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's not easy. Depends who thinks oh, they have Oh, nice. Four staff. Cuts the king down from his perch here. Let's but have BKB if he can get it all. He does have BKB, but he may not have an opportunity. Imprisonment at the last second. He's got some regen coming in. He's going to survive through this and get off the BKB. Well. He throws out the stun. A huge heal with the same panic. Now the Wukong's command. The imprisonment once again. The Song of Siren. Doesn't want to. He needs to be able to jump BKB. out, but they actually. They're going to go back in. Do they find him? He's, he's a tree right there. He's right there. He didn't find him. They hit him. He's not going to be able to jump onto the trees. He's still inside the Wukong's command, but Skeeter doesn't care. He's got his illusions. He's got his whole crew. Signing up for duty to bring down the Chrysalis Monkey King, and he's dead for 80 seconds. A huge opportunity now for Tundra to perhaps break open that high ground. No buyback for 150 gold. Oh, they don't know that, though. I don't think they have much interest in going high ground. I think they have interest in taking over the map, getting even more farmer and their supports who are reaping the biggest benefit out of all this. I mean, hell, Snaking's level 20 on this Marana, basically, with full A on disc. Even these supports are becoming very difficult to kill. Avalanche, toss, arrow coming in. No. Just sending the message. Yeah, just keeping them off. You can't push out these lanes too far. Meanwhile, spiders, illusions. The whole zoo is here to play. Sox is building an A on disc of his own. I, mean, I don't know how you kill this Tundra backline. It seems impossible. You pretty much have to find a good core, have to find the Skewer RP. Lock down Odie with this Static Storm. Maybe this Disruptor Ags is the key to making something happen here. Yeah, from Magnus from the bottom. One HP, guys. Make sure he dies. It's a panic. 
Okay, he's healing. I think he's here. He's up long. Um... Oh, he's healing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go back. You can see very, just very calm, clear communication from Tundra. I'm sure they're. Hey, they feel very comfortable in this game. I mean, you said it. They felt comfortable like 15 minutes ago. Now, with a 19,000 net worth lead and closing in on secret, bit by bit, they are tightening the noose. They just see everything. Well, it's not to be comfortable with, right? You know where secret are at all times. You have control over where the fights take place and how the initiations go for the most part. Secret pretty much are only going to get the jump if they smoke out plant award and just see everything off it. Now you just get Roshan here. Absolutely no contest in the books if you're secret. It's going to be Refresher Shard. Do, do you think they had a preference there? Aghanims or Refresher Shard? Honestly, maybe Refresher here. I mean, you already have, like, bags on the heroes you wanted, right? Sure. Even this Naga has one, so... In which case, now we can drop double Sanus Eclipse. I mean, we could get four Imprisonments pretty easily. I mean... <laughs> double Hex? You, you could hit a four-man RP on the side of Resolution. It may not do anything if Nine's not in it. It will do absolutely nothing. He'll just drop the double hammer, double hex. He's gonna turn the fight around again, so you have to find the angle. Nice skewer. away! Really? It's a long one. Snake King blocked by the kinetic field, actually, but the second one gets around it, and on the side, we're gonna see Puppy pay for that kinetic field, perhaps. The spiders look to be able to chase him down, and the hammer gets one. dropped. Nine turns around, imprisonment, refresh, a second support goes down. Rezo looks to try and blink forward there and get the skewer back. Meanwhile, we see Nisha. He's forced to bomb his BKB, the Bloodthorn. Managed to get that one out of him. They've used kind of everything they have on the side of Secret. They're going to have to full out retreat. They may just have to give up a full lane of barracks. This game is looking rough. There's just not enough damage in the tank. I think even at this point, if you land everything on this Naga, and he doesn't Astral, does it matter? He still has Aegis, he still has the Butterfly Evasion. Just not cutting through enough of this. You need really the skewer, skewer, though. The skewers are the always Astral. an opportunity. Nine, in turn, throws out the imprisonments. They cannot seem to be able to lock down these one heroes because Nine is always there with to be able to get the save. Our they have that Naga. buyback, though, on the Disruptor. They need to make it work. He's something here. They get Astral the gloves again. back, but again, the Astral, the imprisonments, they keep on going down. And this is still the first life. Soxy with the toss over on Anisha. He doesn't have BKB. He's caught at the side. And now the song oh, wake him back up. Out. And there's a second side. Wait, in the vulnerability over and over again. Yeah, but he couldn't get away. He does have a buyback. They're gonna try and get the die back on the puppy here. Lotus Sword bouncing back some spells. Another skewer over the side through the they kinetic the field. Lead. They caught nine. They hit him with the stun. The fight there. The he's dead. All important. Finally, the OD is the one that gets caught in the initiation for resolution. Gets caught in the trap. And no now the time. rest of Tundra. There is no song. There is no imprisonment. OD by. OD Lost coming back. Uh oh. They cannot afford this Naga Siren to die. He pops a man. Dodge a nice out. dodge there on the stun. The arrow coming in. Goes wide. He's focusing on resolution. He does not want to get skewered any longer. The BKB is going to wear out soon. They've gotten on top of night. Well, it's maybe just the touch who's gotten on top of night. Nisha has the second round of the BKB. There goes the imprisonment. Chris they have to get over And they here. follow up off of this one. Science. Oh, that skewer is off the mark. He blinks away first. And that, without being able to catch nine, so much of their extension here on Secret is being ruined. Again and again, the imprisonment's going down. Nisha throwing out the damage, just managed to jump back to his remnant. If they can reset here, ultimately, they still got a buyback out of nine. There is still a buyback on Skater, but both nine and 33 use theirs in a losing game. That is a glimmer of hope, Avery. That is more than a glimmer. That is like best case scenario. You're fighting Aegis. You're fighting so many saves, so many of these skewers on point for resolution. This is the only reason they're still in this game. It's just dragging them insanely far back with the talent with the Aether Lens. You can get them real deep. And of course, that's a three for three buyback situation. I don't even think you're too sad if you're secret out of this scenario. Yeah. <laughs> we saw a whole lot of this guy at TI-10, the Magnus, the hands have collapsed now. Channeling Resolution his channeling his uh, fellow countrymen in, in collapse, trying to show off. You have to fight these skewer tossbacks as skewer, well. man, crazy. I mean, it's another scenario where your Wukong does absolutely nothing. If anything, Naga's just healing for it. Your Ember's dying to the hexes in the back. Yeah. We do see, though, this OD, if he gets caught, if he gets caught, I mean, what a horn toss skewer here. Yeah, they got sucked on the static field, but I guess it just gets overwritten. <laughs> if you can find that Odie and take him out, all of a sudden, Tundra have to route. Like, their saves go away. A lot of the chip damage and the glimpses and all of this become way more powerful for Secret.
but you have to be able to find him, and that is the trick of this game. Yeah, like, I, <laughs> Secret, they may have gotten the buyback out of them, but I feel like they're not going to be able to take advantage of it. I think they're going to be stuck inside their base. There's no way they can go for some crazy all-in. It just comes down to one team fight sort of play. I think Tundra is just going to lock them out. Just wait for the buybacks to come back up. That's why I said this game is going to go late, because not only Secret's <laughs> giving up their base easy, no. and they're ready to defend it. At the same time, Tundra's building damage is very poke-oriented. They can't just force the throne in a, in a buyback situation, right? Yeah. That fight does not favor them, especially when you start getting skewered into the fountain. I mean, it's not normal that you're talking about skewering into the fountain for a viable strategy, but at this point, it is something Seeker can think about. Like, the ranges on some of these, you have a refresher as well. You can blink RP, skewer, refresh, skewer again, RP in the fountain again. The yeah. prize is mine. That's one way to help deal with some of these heroes or separate the fight by such a distance that the Astros just can't come through. With that level 20 talent in the Aether Lens. And as you said, the refresher, it's a very real possibility. And if they get the right initiation, maybe they don't even need the uh, the fountain anymore because now they've got an Aghanim Scepter Disruptor. So if you hit nine, he's done so. If he gets the Static Storm on top of him, he's not going to be able to do anything to stop it. He'll just melt. Uh, if you hit him beautiful, even if you don't, you're doing that to make the OD show. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. Nine has to think about when he shows in these fights and how he's doing it. If he commits to try and get the save, he opens himself up. Right. That's when you get chains into a static storm, something like that. I mean, remember, this OD has been playing this whole game without BKB, without a huge amount of defensive <laughs> items. He's even that's gone true. Moon Shard. You can't get much more aggressive. You get caught in the static storm, you're pretty much done. There is no save to bail you out other than the song. You better pray it's enough. Is he actually going to go Overwhelming Blink? Shadows. Why not? Why not Arcane Blink? It's uh, stronger. That is literally more <laughs> strength, yes. Thank you, Avery. <laughs> Snowball in. Zayat's being pulled into a nasty scenario where he'll just be Avalanche. Now, Chrysalis is out. Oh, look at that. Zox immediately tried to pounce on the Monkey King to get him off the tree. Still caught him in the end. Is he going to be able to get off a of BKB? They've got the Lotus Heart to be able to help him out. He pops BKB now. Turn, Static Storm. There's no real Naga Siren there. They've also caught Puppy on the side. So the two supports will die. Neither one will have a buyback and Skeeter. Woo. Zaxa Obo's catching the Monkey King again. Chrysalis barely managed to jump away. And these, these retreats from Secret have been on point this game. These are not easy scenarios to get out of, and they have done the correct job at bailing on a lot of these situations. Because messy fights like that, there's absolutely no way you're taking that type of engagement. So you need to get your cores out. You need to get them well. I even feel like sometimes Puppy's just running in to try and take some of the spells, yeah. get his cores out of that situation. As long as all three secret cores are alive, they can take a base defense fight. Look at this. They last showed on the, the bottom side of the map, so they smoke over to the top side, see if they can get a pick here on maybe an Ember Spirit or Magnus out of position. Failing that, okay. We don't find that opening. No BKB on this monkey. Skeeter, he's up the Bloodthorn. Oh, there the it is! Instant sides being used as he blinks in. Aeon Disc gets just Nothing. wiped out. The Nullifier completely disrupts that one. They do have a buyback on to Rezzo. They're probably going to have to wait out the supports, though. We're almost up here. You want to fight Chrysalis, you got to be careful. He's BKB. He's still not back up. They're going to go for the buyback now. The Magnus needs to be able to bail him out, but there That's goes on. the song. Perfect timing. Can they get out of the glimpse range, though? Puppy oh. is going to be able to force that one. The man to dodge or the imprisonment. No. Oh, he got the dodge out. Oh. Nice illusion dodge there. Ammo. And the arrow. Now the jammer's being dropped. Almost finishing off the monkey. He turns around. Pot Satanic. Gets a little bit of heal. Not very much, though. Secret. They got to get back to the fountain. Any more glimpses? No more glimpses, apparently. Oh, he needs to heal. Oh, Zayats. He got songed on the blink in punch. That, that might be a very so different close. fight if that happens. And of course, some sick Manta dodges from Skeeter this game. Yeah, very well played by Chandra. Ni nice reset by them. I mean, they are just playing this. Like, Secret, they're holding on by a thread. And they're playing really well to keep this game still going on. But Tundra, very disciplined. They keep on poking at him and poking at him and getting a little bit more resources out of him, a bit more. And they're saying, this is fine. We love this game state. You're losing range barracks. You're losing melee barracks. You're like, losing Magnus buyback. Yeah, Magnus buyback. Like, you will eventually run out of resources. We are going to drain you dry. And... <laughs> Even if that doesn't happen, they still have full control of Roshans. They could still infinitely farm. I mean, they just keep sending the Broodlings in, too. Now, you just watch these mini maps. It's just dots of every color <laughs> going into Secret Space, pushing yeah. the waves in. 
it's a very tough spot to be in. Yeah, even if you did ever push out the lanes a little bit and five man smoked out, like it would be so obvious because the illusions and the spiders are always inside the secret space. I mean, this game has gone on, the OD buyback is up. So that six or seven minute window that Secret had to maybe abuse that. Just no way to capitalize on it. Instead, they had a quick smoke bottom. And break. They actually chained him there. They actually do find the OD. Moonlight Shadow goes out and almost seems like Secret is just making a break for trying to kill as many creeps as possible and get back to base in time. Link is on Nisha. It's going to help him a lot this game. Not get Hex, not get Astral. Be able to come in the fight. So many spells at the same time. Yeah, there's because, a lot. So the blood thorns, the sight devices, the imprisonments. And we saw like the nullifier, right? The nullifier is a big one because yes. now those Aeon discs, it's not helping you on the mag. You're going to purge a lot of this stuff off. It just becomes even more obnoxious to jump. I mean, Sox has got a full Octarine core. <laughs> These Tundra supports are so farmed and they are so annoying. And who's going to take the Aghanim Scepter? Well, going to be the Broodmother. So now. <laughs> talking about the spiders being in the base and now you're gonna have these spinner snares just sitting all around if you ever try and step out of the base there's probably gonna be like 10 spinner snares you're gonna be running into i'm starting Secret to feel like we're at the point where they need five or six lincoln's for the mag you know are we yep. at that point again somebody help this man get the skewers off they kind of do they kind of need just that or pkb here but he's just so far from it Setting up, Socks up, fight the initiation, two-man avalanche with a toss back as well. They do manage to get a skewer back into the tier fours. So as long as nobody dies on the side of Secret, it's going to be okay for them. Just they did use the BKB and Soxa was walking off with the Aeon Tis, the four staff away. Now the Song of Siren allowing him to get out. So he forced a BKB. I think Chrysalis used his. How do you kill any of these heroes? I don't know. If you're not killing him in that scenario. I mean, you need Nullifier. You just need it. Oh, now, but... didn't quite get it. The skewer almost going off. The nullifier is going to make that Aeon Disc useless. Hammer. Oh, he, no. he dies. Now he finished him off. There's going to be a dieback. Now it's going to be a four versus five. We were Jeez, in a good position, though. And oh, oh, oh. My goodness. Oh, just Nine gone. just exploded. And 33. That's the squad spider as well. They do a buyback, so Secret got to be careful as they push out, but they really want to be able to force more. They want to be able to stop these supports. There goes the oh, buyback. The Blood Thorns there. On to the Ember Spirit. They need to help him out. The but here comes Nine. They've got the scythe, the imprisonment going down. This is maybe the last stand from Secret. It's all up to Chrysalis. They need to be able to fight through. Skater, he's going to fall once. Nine, a dieback on him. Odie. They just changed the Secret game for it. Secret, but Chrysalis, he's not sure if he can go for it. They're going to stick on a Skater instead. Soxa comes in, lays down a combo. Almost enough to finish off the monkey gate. He does die. He goes down. Nisha the one-on-one -on -one against Nisha. Now Sneaking joins in the fray. He jumps for Nisha. He must get this kill. He needs it so badly. Another round of slight. The the chain, not quite. The mark, but the double flag gets him before he dies. He finishes off nine. He gives Secret a small chance. Tundra are going to go high ground with four. Just the two possible for a hold here from Secret. It's going to have to be some sort of crazy tier four defense. All up to Crystalis and Puppy. This is one BKB. That's it in the tank. The Puppy buyback. Static Storm in 30. He's getting Snare, getting Illusion. I don't think the Monkey King's stopping this, but he has one last Wukong in the tank. The most veteran TI captain in Dota history and the newest kid to the block, Crystalis, himself for holding against four of Tundra. The tier fours are down. The throat is exposed. They got to get in there soon. He pops the BKB. He starts charging at Tundra, but they just keep their distance. He's going to blow the Wukong's command. He tries to hold. He needs 15 seconds. Chrysalis, can he hold 15 seconds for the Magnus to come back and start getting those skewers? How long is this Wukong? He's praying for it to be as long as possible. It needs possible. to be a little bit longer, but he's getting tossed out of it. And now Tundra, he they pound a, a second round, a refresh, a double, double stun, the static storm. They're trying to hold. They're trying yeah, to get out of sight. The mantle away, the, the Saga Siren out. Four staff, four staff, four staff, TP out, and Secret hold. Crystalis and Puppy, they managed to hold somehow, some way. This game will continue. The refresher on the monkey. We did, we said that Wukong has to last longer. Well, two of them. Two of them was the enough. Way to do it. Tundra just didn't want to commit for that throne. Choosing to send everything else at it except the core heroes in. At the end of that fight, Skeeter says, I'm out of here, man. I am not going to push the luck and force the buyback. And you don't get Ooh. another chance after that one. Divine Rapier, baby. It's time to go all in. A Divine Rapier for Chrysalis. 
is the only real way this could end. I mean, a beautiful setup here from the Boundless in a two-man Static Storm stat static field. That's the only way you're killing these heroes or at least threatening them. So like we said, it was only Crystallis and Puppy. That's all you need sometimes. <laughs> That's true. Now they're looking for more, trying to abuse the window they have. Remember, no buyback here on this Brood for 70. No buyback on this OD if he gets found. Crystal is just running ah, around. He tries to sneak it. Soxa. He tried to kill a creep wave. He really does not, not want to let this opportunity for Seeker to go high ground while there's still 60 seconds for 33. I mean, this, this is 50 seconds. No Brood. Divine Rapier up on Monkey. No buybacks for Secret. They need this throne and they need to race it. Hunter oh, pushing the bottom. Misha, if he can just even hold these heroes here while the rest of the team pushes down that mid lane, but they're actually going to come back. But Seeker want to take the fight. They do not want to end up in a throne race. Get the glimpse, get the glimpse. Oh, puppy. So much time cost here. But of course, you have an exposed throne on half HP. No glyph. Seeker just have no choice in that scenario. Have to come back and play the defensive position. You have to imagine if they've gotten the Tundra's base in that interval. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is this? Now, this is He's absolutely pulling. next level. What did I say? Nerdy and dirty? That's the only way that to play is, it right yeah, there, Tundra. That, is, that is nerdy and birdie to the best of degree. Pulling the creep way with his courier, and he keeps it alive, too. Goddamn brilliant, Tundra. He didn't have anything else on the map he could have done that with. <laughs> with all the gunk on the map, even the courier is making it hard for Secret to get these lanes out. It is beautiful stuff. Illusion. Just when you had to thought you had to fight everything. <laughs> they throw a little bit more your way. Yep. That said, Secret, they are smoking up mid. Remember, no buyback on Odie Brood. Divine Monkey might just one or two shot some heroes here. Refresher coming up in 15. Oh man, a double bounce strike would actually just Good one shot Lord. some heroes. Glimpse, Glimpse on back the first thing, fine. 33, instantly the RP goes down to two. Nine with the save though. Nine, eight being chased down by the snowball. Gets a first step away from Sox and he locks down the two supports and bam! There they go. There goes one hammer. Nine, setting up for a little bit more, gets the reset of the song. So now with just the cores alive, they, trying to get they can out. keep their distance and maybe get out fully. Soxa, no maybe not so lucky. Tiny. That is going to be very bad if he dies here. Another hero with no buyback. Again, secret. They have been down and out this entire game. Anything that resembles parody in this game has got to be a win for secret. They are just like stuck inside their base for like 90% of the game. And now we've gone to a point where we're kind of even, and there's 60-minute items. Secret can actually get drops. out on the map and pick up these 60-minute items, which are a game-changer. Apex for snaking here. Tundra is definitely going to do some farming and choose who to give it to. Still, you have 100 seconds, no tiny, 50, no brood. Secret can get lanes out. Remember, they're not mega in this game. They still have bottom barracks. They can push it out pretty fast between Monkey and Ember. I think you try and find something here. I don't think you're just complacent with trading neutral items and letting this tiny brood respawn for free. That said, it's obviously easier said than done when you have so <laughs> much trash just pushing in your lanes. Yep, uh, that's exactly what Quinn called it on the panel, right? You've got these spiders running at you, these illusions constantly. You have to wait, have a way to be able to deal with it. Secret's idea was the empowered triple melee lineup. And it's still not enough. I mean, I'm amazed at how much they found in these late game fights. The discipline oh, and that the target prioritization. Pick up the mirror shield. I almost want to see that on the Ember Spirit, so... Yeah, you can reflect dive in a the bit spell, deeper. reflect an OD spell here. Might just win you the fight. Yeah. You know what I love is that Tundra, is that they got the Pirate's Hat. <laughs> so as if, you know, like they, they already have a 38,000 net worth lead, but let's go ahead and give them a little bit of extra booster. It's actually, they actually got it uh, on the side of Secret now too. So they can both be digging up bounty runes nonstop. Shuffling items around. I don't think there's, is there really anybody who wants that? Uh, Oh yeah, they got a tiny giant's ring. Tiny. How how does Tundra always end up with a giant's ring? <laughs> I feel like I've seen Skeeter end up with a giant's ring so much. Yeah. He's, I doubt he's gonna take it on Nog in this game, but this guy just always get it. Of course, we're gonna wait for the tiny respawn just to see how big this tiny gets. Everybody. Can we see a BKB see tiny with giant's ring? The, the, the most biggest. untiny tiny of yeah. all time. <laughs> Uh, Secrets still need two more. Oh my lord, he's a big boy. Show him. Good God! <laughs> now that's a hero! <laughs> Mamma mia! Is that a hero? Is he bigger than Roche? He's coming for you! Where's Roshan? Put him in the, the pit. The ultimate rock monster face off. Put him in the pit. Put Roshan in Tundra's bait. <laughs> we'll swap him out here. 
<laughs> I mean, that is a visual monstrosity. They have been inside their base so long, by the way, they haven't finished up their tier five items because tier fours are also dropping for the side of secret. You've got to farm through them. I mean, yeah, they still have one tier four and one tier five left. Pretty much all you've got is Fallen Sky on this Tusk. You've got that mirror shield. They're going to give it to Nisha. So he has Lincoln's plus that. Trying to keep this Ember alive as much as possible. He got the refresher too. Almost level 30. These late game team fights are not as straightforward as they used to be 20 minutes ago. Like there is a lot of gas in the tank for Secret now because of these refresher orbs coming out. Yep. Multiple Wukongs, multiple stuns, multiple DKBs, multiple ults. This is going to come down to buybacks and how much Tundra push presses their advantage with the Roshans, which they're still probably going to get him, but how much does an extra Ags do for Tundra here? Not a lot. How much does an extra Refresher Shard do? <laughs> Not a lot, right? Yeah, that's true. If you're just now joining us, we're 63 minutes uh, <laughs> into game one of the upper bracket final here, Secret versus Tundra. If you're wondering what all this craziness is going on in your screen, it's a lot of tier five items going into play. It's Secret who have been pretty much, it felt like they, they were kind of in that like 10, 5% uh, win chance for the last like 30 minutes, but they've held on. Test to five sheer percent. perseverance. Uh, is, what you think that was generous? Uh, there was it very is. Very generous. Zoxa. He is actually bigger. <laughs> <laughs> the glorious. I'm just basking in the beauty of now. He's got right tree now. volley too. Does that increase this? <laughs> tree is huge. <laughs> so I feel like he's gonna throw that and knock out the ancient just with one punch. I have nothing to say. I'm just admiring the beauty of watching this walk around. I don't think I've ever seen such such a girthy specimen in my life, Cap. That is the beauty of Dota. So Secret have been holding on just ever <laughs> so barely and quite literally probably one of the, the, the smallest little threads you could possibly hope for. Tundra have been fully disciplined this entire time. Like while Secret have been holding on, Tundra have not overextended as they've seen many teams do here at this TI. They're looking for the toss back. They have been looking for openings and patiently letting those openings play out. Somebody walks into that spinner snare. Great. We get the toss back and oh Lord, he is coming. Here comes Soxa. Giants ring Soxa trying to find the opening here. The Wukong's man is going to go off. They do have the imprisonment. The dark shadow is the tiny moving out of that Wukong's man. Thanks to that imprisonment astral save once again from nine. They do have the scythe keeping that Ember Spirit. Four staff him out. And that's the nullifier. Oh, oh, he got hit by an arrow. Puppy down. One pick off, tree ball being used, caught, and forced to use the BKB. Two small wins there for Tundra. A BKB down on Chrysalis and a buyback out of dis the Disruptor. This is what we're talking about. Tundra has just been so good at being able to just sm see small opportunities like this arrow. Soxa looking for an opening. Doesn't go for the toss back, instead the imprisonment. Magnus getting I caught as he so tries to jump in. Also nullified as well. Tree ball is coming in. Resolution needs to be able to get outside. He's managed to get the kick back on his snaking and snowballs his way out of there. Chris Liss sees an opportunity. Hits that him with the bounce strike and the static storm will finish him off. Nine is almost dead. Nisha's been messing around with him, but at the same time, Tusk falls. Nisha all in and trying to chase down this OD. Trying the last red to the BKB. He couldn't fight him. DP out. The BKB, the BKB expires. Uh, he gets caught. Socks up to finish him off with the help of nine. This OD just way too elusive on the back end. So much help as well. And that was a refresher for this Ember. He's going to have to expend buyback here, but he is not going to have that up, which means no BKB for the full duration. Buyback one, buyback two. Skewer away. Pulled out, but at the same time, a dieback on the Disruptor. Chrysalis jumps in, immediately in prison. He's not going to get off the Wukong's command. He hopes for it, is. and he doesn't have the BKB either. Starts fighting up against Skeeter. They trying to hold him. Oh, what a kickback! Right in front of the Monkey King! Odie. What a beautiful kick! Buybacks here. Odie coming back in. With Tundra. the song, setting things up. They yeah, have the imprisonments ready to go. They're going to focus on this Tusk first. They know this repositioning is so damn bad for them. The and Avalanche on a three. He and the Hammers him. come in! Finishing off the Ember Spirit, a two buyback. They are all in on being able to hit either the best RP of your life, That's Renzo. No! One. It's denied by the imprisonment. He the tries to go for the boundless man. strike. He gets the skewer back now, but coming back into play, Chris is the not hacks. gonna be able to do anything. Immediately silence it. That is it. Tundra, they will take this game one. <laughs> Just the most beautiful discipline play you could possibly hope for to see on the main stage from Tundra. They worked secret bit by bit. They wore them down until they could finally 
does really well when you have this super mobile mid, like it can exacerbate the problem like greatly. Like suddenly this tusk is all up in your business and what can you really do to this guy? Any lane swaps or anything that would help enable this or is it just purely gonna have to be through play? I just look at a lot of his gameplay. They just kind of have to be net as a great laner. This is a situation he picked himself into. He was happy with the situation. They didn't mend the gyro. I think he can clutch it up. One word answer, gentlemen. Fly. Who's going to the grand finals? It's going to be secret. All right, Quinn? Secret. All right, you heard from our analysts. Thank you so much to Fly and Quinn joining us and breaking down the draft to such an extreme level. I feel like we all learned something in that one. But game three of Secret versus Tundra. It's about ready to go. One of these teams is going to be going to the Grand Finals. Maybe the other team will join them, but it'll have to be a very long Sunday for them. They'll have to go through the lower bracket. They'll have to play two series in a row. That's nobody always wants, a rough one. Nobody wants to do that, except maybe Matumba. That guy likes playing Dota. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's trying to get as much Dota in before he retires. I mean, this is another game where I feel like this Tundra draft does exactly what they've been doing the whole tournament. They have a bunch of heroes who can and push the lanes out. They have an illusion carry. They have a summons off laner. They have this killer mid for nine, like the spear breaker, like the, the OD, whatever. He can run around, make some crazy stuff happen, help set up the kills for supports. But it got us time, this far. Let's not stop. Yes, seconds. right. Uh, it's very much up their alley. At the same time, I do think like this Dawnbreaker has to be one of the heroes that's better conceptually against the style because she's extremely tanky, shoves away pretty fast, is giving you that scale advantage. At the same time, in a way, she's protecting other heroes from shoving out lanes, right? Imagine Nietzsche is pushing lanes as Gyro is pushing lanes later in this game. He gets arrow, Tusk jumps him, you have the Solar Guardian come out. Yeah. Suddenly, Tundra are in a position where they need more heroes to go for those types of kills. And every time you force them to have to the commit more and more begins. numbers, those moves become a little bit harder, right? So Tundra has to just be that little bit faster and a little bit quicker and three runes. Nice kick away. Tip. That'll secure, uh, yeah, that third bounty rune. So, does mean he doesn't have Rolling Boulder, which uh, I don't know if that's important or not when it comes to this lane. And they're also going to put the Earth Spirit down here again. So, similar to last game, Zaz will take the safe lane with Chrysalis. Not doing that CM Gyro lane, which I feel would just melt the Eidolons. Yeah, why, why not? I mean, Flak is enough at the later levels. So yeah. Maybe they're, they're just fine doing this. They want to set up the stronger off lane. Uh, uh, maybe they're worried about playing double melee into this, this Chaos Knight lane. Maybe it's just Rezo, you're the carry, right? Like, let's secure Resolution Dawnbreaker this game because we saw what it did last time. I mean, Gyro, like we talked about, doesn't have to be the true one in this game. Gyro can just play for some spells, running in, being annoying, shutting down the Enigma early, and catch up later. He doesn't have to have the greatest start of his life because, again, very strong scaling Tricor from Secret if this game goes late. It's already doing so much, Puppy. Pushing back the Snake King Marana, blocking the easy camp as well. The other side, Zayat actually gets a pretty nice W here, and being able to pull the hard camp off of uh, Soxa. A little bit of block in here. Nisha doesn't really care too much. In fact, he slows him down. Nine in response. Snowballs onto the range creeps. I don't know why, man, but little stuff like that always gets me. I love to see those cute little 1v1 matchups and how just little plays and counter plays make the difference between one CS. Zeus wasn't doing that a year ago. That is true. Socks at the bottom. Gonna be run down here. Is this gonna be our first blood? Looking like it. Science will claim that one. Away from Chrysalis. First blood for Team Secret already, especially with the three bounty runes. They're up by a K. Yeah, that is a very fast start for them and very nice for a hero like Earth Spirit. I mean, we were discussing these melee fours for Zyats in a lot of the games because this is just what he's playing. Nyx, Tusk, Earth Spirit. I think Earth Spirit is his best hero. Like yes. His, his Nyx is crazy good. He had insane impulse late game, but this is, I think is actually his best hero. And if this hero gets off to a good start, you just bypass a lot of his issues, right? You get to the faster level six, you get to some early items. This hero doesn't need much. You get to an urn, you get to a BKB, and you just become a beast. So getting the first blood gold here for him in a safe lane Earth Spirit scenario is the cherry on top here for Seeker. They are leading the CS board in all three lanes. I mean, this Enigma is getting destroyed early on. I mean, they they took maybe a little bit of risk. And as you said, they could have done Crystal Main Gyrocopter and just absolutely dumped on 33's game. But instead, they tried to make both the side lanes, or tried to win both the side lanes by putting the Crystal Maiden down there. And it's worked. Yeah, they're just winning them both. This is a very fast start for Secret. Meanwhile, I feel like is Nisha gotten every single CS in this lane, 19 and 5. He's having a hell of a spree right now, but he is getting dangerously low all the time from 9's spam out of shards and such. They got a thunder, don't miss. Apparently not. Not even a high ground miss. Zayat getting blocked 
locked in. He's not going to be able to roll out of that one. Chrysalis will in turn pick up a decent number of those Eidolons. And actually, whoa, I didn't see that. Neutral Creep got him. Got it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a decent trip to base then. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you essentially traded your life, didn't give any gold over yep. to Tundra, and you got Eidolon kills out of it. Those Eidolons are super nice for Kronos. You also get some solo XP. Free trip for the Earth Spirit who finished boots off the first Blood Gold. His little sequence is going Secret's way. I will say, nice double deny for 33. He was like denying one Eidolon with his hero and another with other Eidolons. Yeah, I did so see that. That was cool. Out. Like, very small things this team does extremely well. Yeah. Trying to keep the advantage. 33, easily one of the best micro players in this TI. And he's put into good work here once again. This time around, no neutral creep to deny them that last hit on Zayats. They will get that kill. But again, Chrysalis gets all the Eidolons. So the trade off is not really that clear. It's pretty weird. I mean, honestly, if I was a Zerg Spirit, I don't think I'd be too sad. Because it costs Tundra their combo in terms of resources, right? And it pushes the lane in because you get the flak, it shoves out, you kill the Eidolon. Kristals will get to do this pull. He's not the one dying. He gets a bunch of solo XP. I think it's what Tundra need to do in terms of coming back with the Club, pushing his net worth up, getting the XP for Tiny. Yeah. But it's definitely not some like end all be all. And I mean, that's also the deadly combination of this Tiny. They, like, you just step up too far, you get all in. I mean, Zayats will have to walk all the way down here. When was the last time we saw Chandra lose lanes like this? I, mean, I feel it, like this is they, a rough start. Yeah. Like, you're not going to get much better than this in a TI upper bracket final, you know? These are yeah. two of the best teams in the world. And Seeker pulling a decent lead out of these lanes, especially versus the CK. Well, oh, Chris has maybe overextended himself a little bit. But Zayat's a stop Soxa in what would have been an avalanche toss back under tower with Malphys still on him. Like, that could have been a kill on Chrysalis, but Zayat's put a stop to it. I mean, this CK is just, he's getting beat up top. He's had to invest in extra regen. The extra CM nukes doing a decent damage in terms of the economy. And Ski just gonna have to catch up this game. Like, this is three Seeker cores pulling decently ahead in this early game for only five minutes. Yeah, Skeeter's not gonna be happy with that one. And again, this is a double global lineup. So if you fall behind, Seeker pulls ahead with the levels. Yeah. Suddenly you have Thunder God's Wrath, you have Solar Guardian online, whereas you're trying to catch up with your own ults. And by the time you get there, it's harder to use those because they have the global response. Yeah, like one roll in from Zayat could be a kill on any core if they're far enough ahead. This would be an all-important kill. They're gonna have to snowball Got and do manage to keep up with Nisha as he tries to hop over the cliff. They do have the roll-in though. They need a little bit more damage. Nisha delivers a bunch before he goes down. Maybe Secret can collect some kills in return. Nine is so low. Puppy's gonna throw it out. Frostbite's gonna be game. And Soxa left the DD for his mid laner and may regret that choice. Nope, they're not gonna go for the dive. He's thinking about it. Roll in from behind, Zayat's blind, trying to find Sox. It does get him now, slows him down with that double damage, puts it to work. The toss over is not good enough. Puppy will secure the last hit. 2,000 net worth lead now for Team Secret, three to two. Nice response from Secret to turn that mid fight around. I thought Nisha was just gone for sure, but they get the double kill out of it, they get the rune. Extra levels for these supports. Puppy's up to level five. A lot of early damage gonna come out from the CM Earthspear combo. And Tusk is also not a hero who wants to be losing these river fights. Like, this is where his spells are pretty strong. He's pretty tanky. You can abuse the stack gain. Zeus is a hard hero to man up on. And I respect that Goa template. These are the types of things Tundra they need to start looking for in this game. Get the tiny Marana going, finding these little pill kills and pickoffs. You have CK stun, you have Malphus. Three stunning cores from Tundra here to set up some of these kills. Yeah, and it, some of this may just come down to the fact that they, they lost the lanes, right? If, if this Chaos Knight, who's usually a hero that has so much sustain, you could chill out by yourself, but you could see the pressure uh, he chilling. He's not able to stay alone in this lane. So snaking kind of always has to be here, ready to go with the arrow. Thunder God's Wrath isn't enough. The Frostbite is in range, so he turns around Houston on the Marana instead. A puppy will be able to walk it off, but... The fact that Snake King can't rotate out of this lane, I think, is debilitating to all of that aggression that Tusk wants to be able to put down. Yeah, normally they want to be able to leave Skeeter alone at this point. Yep. Get that double support rotation cooking around their mid. Nine is the hero they often play through for that early tempo, so side lane's going a little so far does mean that the supports get blocked up at these random two-on-twos. They don't necessarily want to be in for too long. Eight-minute room fight? Well, Nisha was trying to jump for it. Dyer's and Snake King will go down to Rezo. Uh, these Tundra supports, they're having issues in this early game. 
the uh, that silencer game. Our puppy was super under leveled. It was like 13 minutes in, he was still level five. No Not issues. this game, man. He is way far ahead thanks to all of these kills. Level three frostbite. Maybe not, not even need the tome. Save that one for Zion. Yeah, I'll take it anyway, you know? Got Roll in, kick back, nice play. Nine out of spells, needs a little helping hand. Snaking the arrow slides right on by, but was enough to dissuade Secret from pushing in some more. They're, they're actually going to use this to smoke. This is a cool play. Yeah, they're going to try and activate this tusk heading towards top. Good. CK is one of the easier carries to smoke to because you can just stun the guy and sets up for you easily. See your Brezzo steals this one coming. Out. The right time here, or is he going to get a little bit too... He might. He, he feels it coming. Sticking on the hard left-hand oh, side of the lane. He pinged right on top yeah. of him, man. They got a ward. They're gonna come for it now, though. Nine immediately goes for the pick off onto the crystal main. They're gonna chain stun him, get that kill, nice and easy. Now nine needs to get out because oh, from the side, Nisha hopping on in. That is a trade off that Secret is very happy with, I'm sure. Beautiful read of that move from Secret. Just saying that this tiny city mid, there's only one place Tusk is gonna go. Right. Rezo reads the move, pings it out. Says, "Hey, puppy, you wanna you wanna take that one for me?" He does. He does his job. And I'll get Zeus a pretty nice kill. He's just having a great game here early on. This is a pretty nasty Zeus game. Like, you're counteracting the, the Brawn ulti with the Vision. You're screwing with the multiple stun initiators from Tundra. You're forcing them to have to gap close you through all of this secret AoE. So, the stronger the Zeus is, the faster he gets to that shard, the Kaya, all this extra damage. There it is. The combination we talked about, the roll-in into the global possibilities for secret. That early level six from Rezo puts it to good use. Get a core kill. Gyro. I mean, I was thinking this Gyro might have like a toughish lane, maybe, and maybe he doesn't have to carry the game. And he's just leading the pack. Level eight and a half. He's rushing an early chrysalis. Can never have too many carries. That's true. Well, the prize is mine. My C pups may beg to differ, but you can never have too many carries, Cap. <laughs> six to three. Team Secret, well, he did have a 2,000 net worth lead, so it has gone down a little bit. So it seems like the state of the game has at least been okay for Tundra, even though we've seen them, you know, lose some kills and stuff like that. It seems like economy-wise, they've been doing all right for themselves. So I wonder how many stacks Chrysalis has available. Well, he's just doing his best to steal him a bit. There it is. He got six of them backed up. Yeah, Soxa comes in, tries to grab what he can. I don't think Seeker want to give up this jungle too early here. Yeah. Radiant's bottom tower has You're always fallen. happy to farm it out, but if Tundra's going to give you these skirmishes, I feel like Secret is pretty strong in them just because of how many levels they have on these supports. Like, Puppy's not too afraid. You also are losing in this tier one trade. So that was something from the other game. Secret defended their tier one for a long time against that 33 brood visage. This game, a little different. He's just going to claim it here, push himself towards the raid pack the rush she will have. Skeeter looks like he's gonna call it quits on that safe lane for now, but 11 and a half minutes in, safe lane tower still being up is great progress, and they will have that Wraith back coming in now for the Enigma, so who knows, they may even like make a rotation back at some point. Roll in on Spirit point, Zayas. He's gonna be able to get some serious damage onto this Enigma, but they don't necessarily have any follow-up. Too many heroes here on the side of Tundra for showing up with Moonlight Shadow being used as well. Yeah, what indeed? Too many heroes there, not expecting them all. Solar Guardian was just coming off cooldown as well. You will pay the price Dyer's top tower is under for their vision sins. It's a little bit of information, though, out of Tundra for the rest of the team. Though they're not really able to take advantage of that. I mean, I guess in many ways, Dawnbreaker is just not a hero that could take that tower. And yeah, now 33 is up here. So now you, if you want to take that safe lane tower, you have to fight into the Wraith Pact hero. That is pretty scary. You have to take this soon if you're secret. Like, you have to equalize the map, open up some more space for your Gyro to farm. Remember, Gyro is this, like, triangle rotation farm pattern hero. He really needs his tier one down to open up enemy jungle and make those rotations efficient. They will finally claim it. Be very happy with that. Now it just comes down to these mid fights. How much does Tundra want to push this mid tower or smoke to the triangle? The answer is right now, yeah, Armless CK. Time is up the essence, it seems, for Tundra. I want to Dyer's give too much space to this secret tricor well. again. The Enigma is going to push in the mid lane while the rest of the team smokes out behind. 
the mid tier D-ward. one tower. Great D ward read though from Team Secret. It's incredibly valuable here. Got to help protect the Zeus. They are just chipping this tower. Eidolon's doing a decent amount of work. Pretty yeah. hard to engage for Seeker here. They don't want to walk up too much. There could be CK in the trees. You don't know where this Tuscar is. He was bottom. You don't get the tier one, but about as close as you can get. Elite yeah, certainly. Shin. And so an early Chrysalis and a straight up BKB. So really delaying the Aghanim Scepter a lot for Chrysalis. Feeling like he's going to need that early team fight item. I think this build is fine. Like, the Ags is a farm accelerator, but you got to remember what he's playing with, right? He's playing with two other cores that are going to take a lot. Sure. He's playing with a Crystal Maiden who can soak off the farm as well. Like, so don't be greedy. I mean, there's just a limit to how many creeps you can eat on the map. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I think early BKB is, is strong in this game with that with that Crystalis just going in, soaking up some spells, healing some decent physical, making the fight happen for your other two cores. Because Zeus does not want to go in. And this Dawnbreaker doesn't really just want to run in first either. Right? He wants to ult on top, either an Earth Spirit roll, Gyro going in. So take us. if Gyro can frontline, it's nice. And on the flip side, this Tundra team fight is a lot about using this Marana ult to find the targets they want between Tiny and Tusk. Surging for now. Tried this before. They're going to have to lead off with the Avalanche. Tumblr toy over the side to make sure they get the toss. And uh, a very nice pickoff for Tundra. He kind of needed to, but Secret, they're going to chase after these guys. Nine. Nice. He's got a haste rune, so he may not be able to outrun that rocket, but he can get some serious distance. They're going to try and chase. Oh, what an interception. What a play from Ron. And now in turn, they're going to save each other with the snowball. Sasha with a beautiful Avalanche. Oh. Hello, Black Hole. Goodbye, Secret. Beautiful interception there to just turn the fight around. Oh, Everything. and one more. Wrap it up. That'll be a team wipe for Tundra. Whoever you want. What? Five-man wipe. A setup. That was just beautiful. Baiting the overextension. That roll is just too deep. And, of course, no Solar Guardian to come out of that fight. Like, that spell might have turned that fight around right there. Yeah, super sure. clump, super slow. All of the Earth Spirit going, but your Dawnbreaker sitting in the fountain. Just don't have that big spell to sustain you through the damage. And, I mean, this chase, he has a haste room. Nine just baiting it out the whole time. Not even sure he dies on this rolling. But Either way, nice seeking. Up play. Does his best Secret Service impression there. Protects the president. 33 comes in with the cleanup. Snake King's a sacrificial guy, you know? Yeah, he's he happy is. to jump in there, take the bullet. As long as he gets the dub. That means Tundra got to be feeling really good about that momentum shift, especially after how hard that laning phase was for them. So the fact that they are now solidly back in control of this game, if they can get to a point where they've got the pipe Radiant completed on the Enigma, then we're full team fight ready to go. Wraith Pack pipe, just like the Broodmother. Surprising. And that Wraith Pack pipe is deadly this game, right? There is only the Dawn Starbreaker and the Gyro Black to really clear into the, to the physical area. Everything else is just AoE magic. Yep. So that EHP from Piper Apex is going to be deadly in this mid game. Now, what do you think of his pickup from Nisha? He's rushing the E Blade. Do you think that is trying to protect people from Tusk Chaos Knight? Do you think it's trying to cut through this Wraith Pack pipe and just like really nail that single target damage? Mixture of both, maybe? Definitely a bit of both, right? Like, if he gets gap close, he can E Blade the Tusk, who's not going to go BKB first. He's going the Deso build. So, if you E Blade him, leap away, bolt him back, Nine just gets debilitated in that type of engagement. At the same time, you can E Blade yourself before one of those jumps. It's very nice. There's also a lot of chains on potential for Tundra. Like, you get Malefist, you get Avalanche, there's an arrow coming through. If they commit on a chain stun target off the arrow and you E Blade that guy and it saves him from a lot of that physical burst, you can turn the fight around. Puppy flirting with danger. Yeah, it really was. I don't think Skeeter <laughs> thought it was just him. <laughs> and it was. It really was. The rest is secret. They were a bit of distance away, Snakey. They're going to try and pop him here. They're going to throw the Dawnbreak Ultimate on top of this to ensure they fast kill, but they're on the wrong side of this cliff. He's just going to try and use it to his advantage, though. They do have the shard out. There's no black hole to fear, so they can just kind of run headlong into Tundra, perhaps. A freezing field. Right, Keep it going. Just managed to get that one kill resolution. Trying to finish it off, but Dawnbreaker Hammer can't go to three. Now Chaos Knight. Skeeter trying to get the Armlet toggling, but Nisha delivers the, the damage. Not quite enough. The toggles keep going. Frostbite going out. Now Crystal is low. Black cannon shots one after the other, but Skeeter stays alive through it all. He toggles through everything.
Nisha got stuck on that high ground cliff too, trying to position to just stay out of range, but it's not enough to finish off that CK. Skier lives through it all. We saw the type of fight Skier wanted to take, taking the rate pack down early. These Tundra heroes are tanky, man. Like the damage is done, right? You have 2,000 HP to cut through on this Tusk, 2,000 on this CK. A nice way to start out killing the support for free. Then you're like stuck in this clump engagement. You're getting multi avalanched. That shard ended up slowing down the gyro as well. Just can't commit it instantly. Turns into a very awkward engagement. You also have to think about these midnight pulses just getting thrown down and burning you for the whole time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This kiting, I mean, Skeeter, it draws him in so deep with this armlet toggling that now Chrysalis is heavily overextended. His lifesteal is not enough sustained to deal with all this bits of damage being thrown at him. And Tundra, now, they want those long fights. Yes. If they get multiple Tuskar spells off, it's a perfect scenario for them. Trying to hammer away, but here comes the snowball. Nine knocks him out. And it looks for a little bit more, too. The shard locking in Puppy. May have gotten the D-Ward, but he won't make it out alive. Nisha barely able to jump away before the Tiny could grab him. Toss him to his allies. 5,000 net worth lead for Tundra. They continue to grow and continue to take more and more of the map away from Secret. This is the Tundra, like, five-man skirmish that they use this Tiny and Marana combo so well for. Like, no cooldowns they really have to wait for. They don't really care about Black Hole this game. They're ready to fight off the stun, get their carry involved. Skier having a way more impactful game this time around. Level 13 top in the charts. He's just been involved in everything. And between him and this Tuskar tag team, there's not enough armor or survivability to deal with the physical burst right now. Pushing Secret to the back, but it's going to give a lot of space to this Tundra lineup to soak up the map. And if there's one thing we've seen this series, it is these two supports between Sox and Snaking. <laughs> they find farm and they find it very fast. Yes, yes, they do. I don't even know where they find this much farm, to be honest. I mean, Sox is pushing up close to Rezo, right? Very different from last game. Yeah, certainly. It's not the same kind of game where Rezo was just able to hang out in side lanes and farm nonstop and join the occasional team fight. Tundra is actually putting an effort in shutting him down first, smoking him at the start of any of these rotations. That's the best way to do it. You take the Dawn or Zeus out, you remove a lot of that counter initiation. Yeah. And if you hit a nice BKB timing here, that is one of the downsides of the secret line. Right? The pipe for Tundra is super powerful. The BKBs next is powerful. Like, there is not a lot to interfere with those durations, and they get a lot done because the physical burst is just so high. Maybe catching Snake King here. We had that smoke. Don't need to use Thunder God's Wrath. Nisha will hold on to it for now. That was a smoke rotation. They didn't find anything in the triangle like they wanted. They end up, uh, well, they'll have to be content with a Priest of the Moon kill because that's all they got. And while ooh, the BKB timing, if they hit the pipe, that already feels bad enough for Secret. You hit this BKB timing on Skeeter, I don't know what Secret does. It's gonna be rough. I mean, at that point, these raid pack lineups can always just go into the pit and force the Roche. Yeah. All right, you have Deso on Tusk with Tag Team as well. Even has Brigand's Blade on top. Feels like it's gonna be a long time before the Gyrocopter's damage becomes relevant enough to carry through against BKB raid pack pipe. That's just not doing enough right now. No. Too much magic AoE, not enough cleave to clear through this. And again, Thunder just spamming out the map, right? Their supports are so obnoxious and just running down these side lanes, forcing you to react. You see the Eidolons top, making people show, making you split up while they get slightly more out of the map every minute that ticks by. The team is just crazy efficient in terms yeah. of getting farm on everybody. And they make it pay off too. Their itemizations are very good. Again, four staff already out for sneaking here. Another one being built by Soxa. So double four staff once again. That is their MO. It's gonna bail out the cores even more. They're ready to go. They are always ready. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Movement across. Regeneration. Trying to tackle that area of the map that Radiant uses to farm up so much. That Radiant Triangle, where we typically have a gyrocopter who's gonna be farming of ancient. They couldn't actually catch anybody there, but it did clear out enough space where they feel comfortable going back to do Roshan, right? Because Secret is just I mean, if they're not going to challenge them immediately, Roshan just dies too damn quickly. So an Aegis pick up more Skeeter. Ooh, accidental BKB pop, I believe. Haste. He doesn't need it, you know, sending a message here. 
Uh, yeah, Roshan cannot dodge the smoking. That's that great pack force bite that Seeker just can't take right now. They just need more farm. They need it on the Sawbreaker and he's just not getting the space, man. He's he really is so not. Low. Nine might just be able to 1v1 him here. Rezo not going to be able to TP out in time. Sox is there for the cleanup. And this Tusk has just been incredibly annoying for the Stormbreakers, yes. The amount of interrupts he has, the physical burst versus a hero that does not build armor for a long time. And he has racked up some serious Deso charges too. He's at 12 already. Nice. Try and find this tiny. Nice in, in kick back. A lot of magic damage. There's that E-Blade being put to use. If they can catch somebody out of the way of the Enigma, no right back, no pipe. They do get bursted very quickly. Very true, it's like the bail from last game. When you have this much magic damage, it makes all of your stuns count for just that much more. It'll, it'll push Gyro almost to the top of the charts here. So he, Stalas is still going for that Axe. He's just gonna try and scale it up in a late game Gyro with Axe Satanic. It's one way to try and Radiant's deal with the, the burst blink without attack. a save behind you. And there's one save in this game, you know, it is, it is a very long way away, but the Earth Spirit Axe. That's true. Can't run. <laughs> you turn someone to stone, kick them away. Might be something to play for super far down the line. But of course, Tundra's going to have a field day before then. Yeah, certainly. Especially with, given the fact you said, you know, they have three cores that all want to farm up on the side of Secret. They've only got a quarter of the map that they own. So really nothing is left for Zayat to complete his BKB, let alone that Aghanim Scepter. So it's going to have to be through fighting. And a fight. Is immediately going to be forced onto Chrysalis. Maybe forced. Has to use the BKB. Cannot get caught into a team fight against a Chaos Knight with its Aegis and a BKB. Definitely not. Even the Mage Slayer on top of the CK going to give him the extra resistant tankiness in these engagements. Not to mention if he ever lands hit on Zeus, just reduce the damage. Look at this. Sentra saying, okay, that side of the map, they can't play. Let's go to the other side of the map immediately. Yeah, Moonlight Shadow on one as well. Found the Smoke is going to break. They did find the Gyrocopter. An opportunity to be able to burst him out almost instantly. And there he goes. The response from Secret. They tried to do some damage to the Tiny. Only got him to half health. They fully give up. Now leaving Puppy behind. Everybody else is going to be able to get out. Yep, we're good. These AoE spells just do nothing into the auras, man. Yeah, seriously. You have to keep your cores alive here. Tundra are just accumulating more and more net worth lead up to 10k here, using this Aegis to perfection, closing out the map. Suddenly, Secret's stuck in a corner again. I feel like that's been the story this whole series. Yeah, kind of. That game two. We heard our analysts come in and talk about how they felt like it was just one team fight away from Team Secret being able to, to crack over the game, and they eventually did do that. I'm not convinced that the, there's that same kind of win condition here in this third game. I mean, that game had Rezo at top of the charts with like nine and one. This game, he has just been destroyed by this Tusk and Enigma on the map. It just doesn't have the same physical impact as the last game, and now you're getting tossed back on. Oh, they can't afford to lose nine. Nisha, he's going to be pulled over to the side, tries to get a hop away, but no chance. 33 tries to throw out the black hole, doesn't actually catch what he wanted out of that, but still great fight for Tundra. Let's hit high ground. The snowball getting him larger every minute here. The aura is just nothing to fight through it here for Seekers. This is turning into a death ball of a game. It certainly is. Hey, Tundra. They're going to force it. Like game one, they chilled out. They took so much. They just built up this net worth bigger and bigger and bigger. It looks like here in this situation, 26 minutes in, they're going to claim a full lane of barracks. Team Secret without uh, Nisha, without a buyback there, there's no way they can hold high ground. That is their big high ground hero. Game one, they had the Magnus. This game, they've got Zeus. That's the best they have to offer. I don't even think he can really walk up. <laughs> is he even doing anything to them at this point? There's way too much tank ability on this Tundra side. The glyph is down. The tier three is almost falling. His touch is going to force this for two. Why back? Poppy puts destroy. himself in the front lines. They immediately do get the kick back onto the Enigma. Is that who they really want to go for, though? They've lost their two supports for it. They're going to buy back. But are they going to get anything for this? Even with the extra life. Puppy TP's in. Instant die back. Rezo turns around, used the magic meter to get rid of the Malphys, but he's just dragged back in by Skeeter. Run down through the side. Zai's trying to get the opening. The Dawnbreaker ultimate. It's going to land and do a lot here with an AoE stun, but all these heroes on a bit of HP. They do not have enough to be able to cut them down. They need more damage. Crystal is trying to deliver. They finally do get it. They bring down the Chaos Knight, run over the Enigma, trying to chase for more. Snaking gets out, completes his TP. Tundra. 
They just did a serious economic blow and maybe a very real blow as Nine takes down Resolution after that fight. Nisha, you cannot let him get away with this one. He's going to eat play, but he already used the lightning bolt. He's going to TP out. Oh, no secrets. Nine playing with his food in this game, man. Putting the BKB to great use here. This Tuscar is going in and out of the fight. It's just way too annoying for Secret. They don't have the hard stuns to lock these heroes down. Double four staff as well. And like we see, the damage is just takes so long to bring any of these heroes down. Yeah. I mean, it's a triple buyback from Secret in their base defense. Don't even have Black Hole for this engagement. The Enigma is just a damage sink. But he sinks a lot of it. And it's only because of this buyback here just a beautiful ultimate resolution that ultimately sets them up to be able to clean up the fight and, and just not lose the game outright. Also, Skeeter losing the Aegis midway through that one. Nisha's been caught, though. Nisha, he played. Oh, he doesn't have a hop, but he does have a blink dagger. He blinks away. That was as close as you can get. Still a blink on CK. That was a game ender right there, and they might still get it, and they do. One more buyback left for Secrets. And again, is it even enough? Can the Zeus even push them away from this lane? I don't think so. I mean, Tundra had enough of the long games in the first two. Decided to kick it up a notch. Nice blink backwards. Anyway. It rolls right into the middle of Tundra. A trap beautifully set and sprung by Skeeter. Stops the initiation entirely. There is still a tier two up at the top lane. So Tundra cannot take Mega straight up. But. They're only a few minutes away and a couple of movements out from being able to get that potential last team fight forced upon Team Secret. I don't see a way to fight this five, man. <laughs> I just don't see it. Where's the damage coming from? Even if you land everything on everybody, it's just not there. These heroes are too tanky. Triple BKB is now online, so now you have to worry about BKB Black Hole on top of everything else. Hunter just closed this map out so fast. The death ball came online. You lose one fight. Suddenly you're in a position where you lose Aegis. That converts into a Rax mid. They never look back. Secret looking perhaps the last team fight of the series. What do they need? To they like... need a divine rapier. And Crystal's has a cued, but he is a long way off. Uh, okay, what do they need to win this fight in order to get to that divine rapier? They need a divine rapier. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Tundra will buy one for him. Well, look at that triple bounty room just casually sitting back on uh, the dire side of the map. So, In and, the and, you know, Tundra, chill out. Take your time. Wait for Roshan. There is very little rush here. The They're just farming it up. Both their supports ahead of the enemy three. This insane amount of utility coming out. You have full Lotus on this Mirana drum on top of it. Sox has got four staff mules. I mean, these supports are incredibly hard to kill. You have to commit a large amount on them in the first place, which you don't want to because they're not even the big damage dealers. Yep. It's a near impossible situation for Secret to play out of here. I mean, it really is divine. You just have to find a way to get to it and hope the blacks are enough. Because I don't think any other item is going to cut through this damage in a base defense here. But what if Tender goes high ground before that? because that's looking like a very real possibility. I mean, they, you should, like, tradition says you should probably wait for Roshan. Radiance but God, what if they did? What if they did go for that high ground? Could they just end the game right there? Could they just potentially seal their grand finals appearance? You gotta wait, though. Dyer's wait for the Roshan. Puppy Doxa knows he's here. Doxa. I don't know how he knew, but he's gonna find him. You're not getting away from this one, Puppy. All that farm. So it's going to get taken away by nine. Stalls out the game a little bit. True. I think Soxa was just predicting that this is where Gyro's going to go. Like, yeah. Where else is he going to go to farm? And, he, <laughs> and then he found a Crystal Maiden farming the ancient. Take that too, but that was a beautiful read. I mean, the, the way these guys are reading the map and the movements. Absolute perfection here. It really does feel like they've cut it down to the science. It's process of elimination. They just can't farm these areas of the map. Go to the few parts that they can. I mean, just look, look at uh, look at what Crystalis has to do in this. He's been hugging the side lane of the trees. He pops out, tries to get a little bit of farm in this bottom lane where he can. He can buy the relic, but the divine, the full out divine, is so far away. Relic ain't doing it. No. They need something much bigger, much grander to be able to cut through Tundra, who smoked up around the Roshan spawning here. 
look for an opening, see if they can find anybody. Nobody's showing. Okay, let's check that Roshan pit. Oh, hey, look at that. Big guy spawned. We could take Aegis and Shard. Well, they get to choose who gets to take that big three Shard. Yeah, between Skeeter and Nine. The potential two Royal Rotors. As they're both looking, their first time TI appearance. We get to that Grand Finals. And even the nullifier done for this Tuscar, so any sort of save mechanic that would have come out is no longer there, which Seeker aren't even getting there. It's pretty much just the E-Blade. He's kind of just itemizing ahead at this point. Yeah. I mean, it is all on this Gyro Reaper, which, like you said, I don't know if we're getting there. Tundra can just walk down top, cement the Death Ball. And even if he does get it, he's got no sustain whatsoever. He doesn't have life steal. Yeah, so he, he might, it's no guarantee you. He might just get that. one shot. By the night, might just show up, punch him in the face. Glass jaw gets knocked out. And there goes the divine rapier. That is Dota. Sometimes punching someone in the face is stronger than divinity. Thirteen to thirty-one. Thirty-three minutes in. Feels like this game three has just been a slow, constant progression of Tundra. Building up that snowball bolt. Realistically, Team Secret are left in just one crazy good hold. And if they do manage to succeed, they could get themselves back into the game. We could have this windfall of net worth going their way. But as it stands, there it is right there. Well, Gabe has decided. <laughs> no shot. Honestly, from a theoretical perspective, I think it might be true. But of course, Everything Dota. breaks down on the TI main stage, yes. right? Dota is not played in the theoretical round. It is played in the Coliseum, where mistakes can be made. So there is still a glimmer of hope here. Our faint ags on Nisha give them some extra damage and stun here. Okay. Of course, we are still a little bit off that divine. <laughs> and even when he has the gold for it, how do they get out there to buy it? That is a bigger problem. Yeah, because you can't just rely on the courier. I mean, that might get courier sniped. is already in the trees, so he's prepping for it. That is so scary. That is a risky courier to run, man. Yeah. Meanwhile, you might not even get there. Tundra's just near your base. Tundra, they're setting up. They got the initiation. They're going to bring down the Dawnbreaker first. The air comes out. He's dead. No buyback there. Zion's trying to disrupt whatever he can. The snowball on back in is going to be able to finish up Zion. The puppy falls as well. Three dead. No buyback. Tundra. Maybe don't even need the Megas. Maybe they just delivered the final blow to Team Secret. Knocking Divine them down to the lower bracket. You'll have to fly it through here on the side. The Got last it. hope. Now is he going to be able to sneak it through? Will anybody notice this courier? It's going to slip on by for now. But Megas is going to be claimed. Team Secret. Oh no, he's been grabbed. BKB does go off. Divine Reaper starts going to work. But you can see they're actually decently tanky. Chrysalis has got to get back to it. But he's just going to get blacked out immediately. Divine Rapier picked up. Divine Rapier dropped. And that is it. Tundra are going to the Grand Finals. And in an absolute dominating fashion for this Game 3. Those first two games, pretty rough and tumble. But this just cemented their dominance in this tournament. They are definitely the favorites going into that Grand Finals. Just... No one can break the way these guys play the map, out farm you, out efficiency you, they find the picks, your lanes collapse, your jungle disappears. It is clinical, man. There are just no mistakes that come out on this side when they're functioning on all cylinders. Games look like this. You get death balled out of nowhere from that 20 minute mark to the 30 minute mark. All downhill. It's just gonna come down to that best of five grand finals. Then we'll see whether or not it's going to be Secret or Liquid who will challenge Tundra there. See if they can break Tundra in a best of five, because in these best of threes, Tundra has seemed untouchable. Crazy strong performance by them, and we're going to see more of them tomorrow, but that actually is going to be closing out the day. A 2-1 for Tundra takes him to the grand finals. And we have now locked our very first grand finals here at the International 2022 Tundra Esports, an organization that you wouldn't have heard of at prior TIs. They were very, very close to qualifying the TI-10, fell to OG, and now they're back in a very strong form. I don't really think many people would have predicted them. I think closing out after Tour 3, it was... Uh, a dice roll on which of the Western European teams were going to be the front runners. 
and Tundra were definitely in contention, but the fact that they have managed to carry the momentum and not falter at the finish line, Sheep, I think that is a testament to how strong they are. I mean, I would never have expected it. Like, you, your coach, AUI, this is a guy that failed pathetically <laughs> to qualify for TI-10 with Arkosh Gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, and now to be a grand finalist coach for Tundra, I mean, what a story. What, what a, a story. progression. Wait, 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 that was